Hey guys how are you what if Naruto gained the power of demigod daughter movie? Naruto tailed beasts, demons. Leo floated in a sea of whiteness, naked mostly, as he floated he dreamt, but now his dreams strayed towards his own past. However he didn't know it, however Leo could tell that his dream was strange and unusual. Konoha, the home for the ninja of the land of fire, a place where stories and legends are made, here is where one could find one Uzumaki Naruto, hero of the fourth shinobi war and the Jinchuriki of all the biju but the blasted ten tails, one could use Sally find him walking one of the many streets or at the ramen stalls with his friends, but today one can hear the screams of the fan girls that now hunt him down to, as it were, hump him. Naruto was not in the best of moods today, he had just been for the past three hours running from rabid fan girls that seemed to have formed after the fourth shinobi world war, and they seemed to have gotten smarter, instead of fighting each other for him they were working together, if it wasn't for the fact he had shadow clones he would have been caught over twenty times now. That was the third group in the last hour, Naruto looked around worrying, it had not been the best day for him, somehow a fan girl got his keys and broke into his house with her friends while he was in the shower, needless to say running around in his towel with girls on his tail made him wonder if Sasuke had to deal with this when they were in the academy together. Left, Naruto ducked missing getting hit by a net, growing, he increased his speed, he had found an Anbu ten minutes ago, stole his uniform and formed a henge around him making him look like Naruto, the funny part was watching him run away from the fan girls while yelling for his head. Rolling to a stop he saw that the Anbu glaring at him, clad only in his underwear and mask. Naruto, look at his eyes, why would I do that Kurama? Kurama growed in his mind. Because I don't think that he is a Kanahagakur ninja Kurama stated, and his chakra is evil and decaying. Naruto dodged a swipe from the Not Anbu and saw what Kurama was saying, the eyes of the Not Anbu were yellow and filled with hate, seeing the eyes made Naruto feel cold and afraid, the Not So Anbu narrowed his eyes and hissed, he started to steam and bubble up, Naruto could only stare as the man before him changed. What the fuck, Naruto thought as he looked at the thing before him, it was about six feet tall with dark wings that looked like someone had set fire to, its body was covered with blisters like it had been swimming in lava, Leaping away Naruto headed toward training ground 44, looking back he saw that the not Anbu turned into monster was in the air following. Hey guys, a little help. Like now, he yelped as he dodged a vicious claw swipe. Here use my wings said Chome. Closing his eyes Naruto felt the biju's chakra moving though his body, focusing it, a pair of wings sprouted on his back and he took to the night sky. The monster followed and it was now a game of luck, Naruto knew he was smaller and more mobile than the monster but the monster seemed far more faster, stronger, and had more flying expertise than him. So focused on fleeing Naruto failed to see a tear in the sky in front of him, when he did it was too late, with a yell he was sucked though and it closed behind him, if one was there to see it, it would be like a light going out, one moment Naruto was there the next gone, the monster flew around screaming, then in a flash of sliver and gold it died, crumbling like ash. Sheesh, how did the enemy get here? The one who spoke was holding a massive sword that was golden with a silver trim, his body and face were hidden by a large hood and shadows. No idea, must have followed us here to this realm, that boy did well if he stayed alive for so long, few have made it past there first, the second of the two voices came from an elderly figure, one that looked like he was going to fall asleep any second. I hope he lives, where did you send him again? Greece, and knowing you are going to ask, Crete, think he will live. He needs to. Our foes are planning something big, if he fails, war will break out, one so large that the humans may not even still exist when it is over, both figures looked toward the spot where Naruto had disappeared. The first one spoke under his breath, so low that the other could just barely hear, Godspeed, boy. Ah, screamed Naruto as he was falling down the rabbit hole. Chomai's chakra had disappeared after he had been sucked in, now after falling for so long, our short period of time Naruto was in his mindscape talking to his friends, the Biju, Shukaku, the one-tail raccoon, Matabi, the two-tails cat, Isobu, the three-tails turtle, Sun Goku, the four-tails monkey, Kokuo, the five-tails dolphin horse, Saiken, the six-tails slug, Chome, the seven-tails rhinoceros beetle, Yuki the eight-tails bull octopus, and finally Kurama, the nine-tails fox. Okay guys I have one question, what the hell was that thing? Naruto was smacked in the head by one of Kurama's tails. No need to yell Naruto, we can hear you just fine, said Kurama, we have no idea what that was other than that it wasn't alive or human. I say as soon as we find out where we are we go back and kill that fuck, said Shukaku, I want to see if a sand coffin can crush it and see if its insides are red. Matabi snorted, brother, 
You sensed the same thing we all did, and if Naruto didn't run what would have happened to our favorite kitten? Naruto blushed, Madabi was like an older sister figure, and she had the habit of calling him kitten, like her previous host. Son Goku nodded and spoke, whatever that thing was I think that it was there on purpose, it only went after Naruto and no one could see it, also there's the fact that even thought we were in the middle of the village, no one came to help. There's the fact that somehow the fangirls seemed to be a bit too well teamed up and the teamwork was over the top, almost like they had the Sharingan and the Byakugan, stated Kokuo. Naruto shook his head, I don't think so, their eyes were dark and now that I think about it, their chakra was like they were under and Genjutsu, also only members of the Hyuga can have the Byakugan and Sasuke as the only holder of the Sharingan. Unless one stole them there is no way one could have M. Kokuo, Naruto, said Gyuki, that made them all wonder why and how the FGs were connected to the monster, Naruto and the Biju knew that even thought the villages were at peace and more or less united, there was some who wished to return to the fighting, and that there were some in the village that hated Naruto and wanted the demon Brad dead still. Isobu and Saiken were silent, Isobu because he is trying to take a nap, Saiken because he had nothing to say, Kurama was resting, after combining his yin and yang halves he was not up to full strength so the other tailed beast offered to help Naruto as he recovered, but now he was worried for his friend, even if Naruto was an S-class ninja, he still had his moments of complete stupidity. I am more worried about where we are going, it feels like when Obito and Kakashi used Kamui, be ready for anything Naruto, said Gyuki. Naruto nodded and returned to the real world, as he watched a light seem to grow in front of him, to his wonder it seems to shine almost without hurting his eyes, but at the same time brighter than the sun, then Naruto was swallowed by the light and knew no more. Ow ow ow, Naruto said as he held his head, it seemed that the light dumped him on a rocky outcrop on a mountain, the sky seemed darker with an ash cloud hanging, the earth seemed like a garden overrun with green, and there was an underlining feeling in the air and in his bones of something wrong, terribly wrong, Naruto sat down and meditated, drawing in nature for sage mode, however as soon as he did released it with a gasp. What was that, he thought, that was too fast, almost if the chakra had never been used and wanted to be, that made no sense, usually he had to become one, but for some reason it wanted to be used, like if was lonely and wanted to be accepted, if he hadn't stopped when he did he would have been turned to stone. Taking a scroll from a seal on his arm, he unsealed some clothes outfit from Payne's invasion of Kanahagakur without the cape and headband, after changing he stood and started to climb the mountain, reasoning that he could see better. Hey Naruto. Is it just me or is there a reason why you are walking? Or are you just enjoying the sights of nothing? Asked Kurama. Naruto tripped and crashed on his face. Getting up he glared at his navel, where the seal for holding in the biju was. There is no need to explain other than I have been running for who knows how long and I fell though a hole in the sky so pardon me if I want to walk. Kurama stayed quiet after Naruto's answer. After walking up the mountain for a few minutes, Naruto spotted movement in the woods to the east of him, squinting and adding chakra to his eyes to help he saw a lady running, but it was the things that chased her that made his blood boil, three of the things that chased him earlier were after her like cats on a mouse, they were clearly out for blood if the looks of it were right. Narrowing his eyes Naruto spotted a cliff that jetted out near the place they were running, gathering chakra, he leapt towards it, landing there he guessed that in five minutes they would pass under the cliff, making two shadow clones, he waited to jump. Rhea was tired, she had been running for what seemed like weeks, even thought she was immortal, the stress of carrying a baby and running away from the demons that her husband Kronos had hired to tell him when she gave birth, he said it was to protect her, the bastard, her dress, once white lined with gold, now is torn, dirtied and now more than likely going to fall off her, her bare feet ached with every step, she couldn't go into her true form because she was so tired, then she tripped. Her pursers surrounded her in a flash. Well, look what we have here, a titaness that is almost like a poor little mortal, what way you boys, isn't she cute, leered one of the demons that surrounded her. One of them proceeded to kick her, Rhea cried out in pain as its force slammed her into the mountainside, as she crumbled to the ground her dress, already torn, reached the breaking point, her breasts and nipples became exposed to the air and she tried her best to cover up. If anything the three leers grew larger, they started to reach for her and she press against the rocks, her fear became stronger as they got ever closer. The boss did say to tell him when the brat is born but he didn't say what we could do to this wife, and what's in it for us. Only bits of man flesh, I bet he will not notice a bit missing from his wife, one hissed out, the other's eyes glittered with excitement and nodded, also we can just say she was attacked by a human, after all, they are just mindless, stupid, and smelly beasts. I like that plan, the last said, but let's hurry it up. I am starving, they grabbed her and just as one was was about to take a bite, 
he was beheaded by a spinning ball of energy, the other two dodged as a glowing figure shouted, Rasengan. Naruto stared at the monsters that have tried to molest and eat the woman behind him, he threw the Anbu jacket to her so she could cover up. The one that he beheaded stood up and threw Naruto into the rock side leaving a good size 2 meter crater with Naruto in the center, he stared in shock, after all, it had been dead a moment before. The three wannabe zombie brothers, Naruto decided to call M that, glared at him in a mixture of hate, confusion, and fear, from the one Naruto killed, ugly one with a scars over his face seemed to be the de facto leader, the demon spoke up. What are you doing, human, it spat the word human like it was garbage in its mouth, go back to your cave, this is a matter between your masters and better, Naruto narrowed his eyes at that, he did not like that he, the monster, seemed like a certain suck up Uchiha or Hyuga clans, not that they were all bad, but some seemed to have sticks up their asses. I am, as you see, defending her from you monsters, you have no right to harm an insect woman that is pregnant and expecting, Naruto said, trying to play it cool even thought he was afraid, grasping a kunai from his pocket he prepped for battle. His chakra flared and poofs were heard, the monsters, plus Rias, eyes widened with shock, instead of one human there was now fifty-one. The clones rushed forward and the demons were hard pressed. Naruto grabbed Rhea and carried her bride style away from the fight. I am Naruto, what's your name? he asked. Rhea, Rhea said shyly. She blushed, and inside her mind she was trying to understand what was happening. No mortal should be able to do even half the things this one was doing. Her husband, Kronos, and the rest of the Titans had made sure of that, but why was this one different? Nice to meet you, Rhea. I am Naruto, Naruto said with a smile. Rhea was now more confused, she could tell Naruto wasn't speaking in any language that she knew, but she could understand him, it made no sense, unless, no, she shook her head, that was a myth, a story Gaia told her and her siblings, there was no such thing, after all she was an immortal and has seen everything, but this human was different. While Rhea was having her mental war, Naruto and the Biju were thinking about the monsters that they have been fighting, Naruto almost blacked out when one of the Shadow Clone's memories came. He was able now to slow down but he didn't, the clone's memories were telling him to run, run away, and never look back, the raw evil that was in the memories of their deaths in the monster's eyes made Naruto want to hide and stay away from the things. Mindscape. Unknown to Naruto, Kurama and the rest of the Biju were talking about the monsters, and how they were alive, Kurama was the only one that has been dead, but even he was at a loss, however they knew that they had to help Naruto to the fullest, or else their favorite human would die. Real world. It had been over an hour since Naruto and Rhea met, they were heading towards Crete, where Rhea said she would bear her child, she told him of her husband, how her father foretold him that his a child of his would overthrow him, and how Kronos, in order to stop it, ate five of her children, Hestia, Hades, Demeter, Poseidon, and Hera, at least he thought that was their names. Rhea also said that her husband would come as soon as he hears that she has given birth to eat her child, that made Naruto mad, he was an orphan and didn't want that to happen to anyone, so he was plotting on how to trick Kronos, who knew that pranks would be so useful in real life. Rhea look at the blonde every so often, she thought that she could sense the power of one of her children flowing though him, but that was just a mother's want for her child RN, right? But at the same time she could sense a more older and stronger power in him, untapped, he had said he wasn't from this reality, but came on accident, so she thought maybe it was just something to do with his homeland. Hey Rhea! is the baby a boy or a girl? Naruto asked, pulling her from her thoughts. A boy, she said with a small, sad smile, she asked, why do you need to know? I have thought of an idea that will save your kid and trick Kronos, you said I felt like one of your kids so it'll make a earth clone the shape and size of your baby that looks the same for Kronos to eat, then your kid would be safe for a while till he can defeat his father. Rhea was stunned, she had thought of using a rock for Hades and Poseidon, but for the former he could not in time, the latter Kronos could tell it wasn't his child, so she asked him how it would work stating what she had tried, Naruto explained in his special way, she grinned and started to giggle at the plan that Naruto made, it was insane, it was craze, and it just may work. Leo sitting at the table eating cereal while thinking of his dream, for a four-year-old Leo's mind was always thinking about things that were interesting, the night before his mother read to him one of the Greek myths, the story of how the gods and goddess came to be, but his little mind at the time did not understand that what he saw wasn't a dream but the past. Leo poked at cereal in his bowl and frowned, his mother had to go to work and his babysitter was out of town, his aunt Rose, however, was coming, Leo did not like his aunt, she made him feel like he had to get even with someone or something at times, Leo fingered at the tool his mother had given him, it was a simple hammer for little kids but Leo loved it. Of course his mom took it away after he covered the table with nails, 
he had did it on a whim, but she gave it back after he had removed the nails and had used the puppy eyes, she broke in seconds under that look. I don't know why but somehow that dream was so lifelike he thought, I was hoping for a dream where I made a fucking warship, Leo had heard his mom say that F word the other day, he didn't know what it meant, but it sounded good to the ear. The past with Naruto and Rhea. So let's rest here. Rhea nodded to Naruto and sat down. The area that he had picked was a good one. It was a simple meadow with a creek running though, she was enjoying the blonde's companionship, even if he seemed odd. Then again, most of her family was crazy in one way or another. Her brothers were always fighting and bragging about how great they were. Her husband was no better, for the titan of time, he was terrible of keeping track of time. She rubbed her belly where her sixth child kicked. Soon, she whispered to her child. It pained her that she was unable to save her other five kids, but unless one got away, they would remain trapped. A snap was heard in the thicket at the other end of the meadow. Rhea watched as Naruto throw a knife at the location. He told her when he was walking that it was a ninja tool called a kanai. Naruto's eyes narrowed at the sight where he had thrown his tool. He quickly made a shadow clone and he transformed into another kanai. The clone took the kanai that Naruto henged into and waited, spying a shadow flea he launched the projectile at the shadow figure. The figure grunted as it dogged by rolling to the side, however, the figure did not expect a fist to hit it in the face, the figure cried out as it flew into the meadow and rolled a few times, finally stopping by landing in the creek, the clone leapt at the figure with a Rasengan in each hand, the figure raised its head and Rhea seeing the figure's face yelled, stop. Naruto, who had just ran out of the thicket, saw what was about to happen, threw a kanai at the clone, he hit the clone, dispelling it just as its attack was starting to touch the figure's skin, however, the Rasengan had the effect of cutting the figure's cloak, causing her breasts to spill out. Hya, she screamed and Naruto fainted as he had a massive nose bleed that shot him into the air from the sight of the girl's size B breasts, Rhea's hand hit her face and she groaned, she knew the girl, Zoe Nightshade, daughter of Athlas, a Hesperide, Rhea didn't know that she was nearby, Naruto hit the ground hard and groaned in pain. Zoe covered her body with her arms, the she marched up to his body and raised her foot over his midsection, and brought it down, hard, Naruto awoke comical fashion with his body jerking from the blow, what was that for? That was for attacking me perverted creep, I am no pervert or a creep, then why did you attack me and expose my body? I attacked you because you were following us and it's my job to protect Rhea there. Naruto pointed at Rhea who was speaking under her breathe about idiot blondes, as for the whole naked thing I am sorry, I'll fix it if you want, Zoe's answer came in the form of a growl at Naruto, he raised his hands and backed away slowly. So you want me to just stand here, so that you can fix my cloak, what's left of it, while I am naked, Zoe hissed out slowly with each word promised pain for Naruto if she didn't hear the correct answer, the sword that appeared in her hands wasn't helping. Yes, he answered with a whimper, praying that it was the right answer. Comma comma comma, comma comma comma, it wasn't, die, mercy, Konoha. Hanada was walking towards Naruto's home with a box in her hands, she was hoping to surprise her crush with a homemade meal with ramen, she giggled at the idea of Naruto inviting her in and having her feed him the ramen, Hanada started to blush as her thoughts started to go a bit more, sensational. She went up the stairs with a jump in her stride, but when she turned the corner to reach Naruto's door she froze, there, on the railing, was someone she had never seen before, the person she had seen was a little girl, with red hair staring at the open door, the girl also had a silver glow around her that reminded Hanada of the moon, on her back was a bow and quiver stocked with arrows. Hanada quickly hid herself and listened for anything that may have come from Naruto's room, Bakugan she thought and activated her dojutsu, with her eyes now having the ability to see though while she could tell that there was several people in Naruto's apartment, all female, the ones in Naruto's home had chakra levels of an average ninja, but the girl out front had a massive amount, at least if not more than Obito when he was the host of the Ten Tails. She gasped and the girl's head snapped towards her. Hanada tried to tell here's LF that the girl didn't see her but she just couldn't, the girl's sliver eyes seemed to narrow as if she had seen Hanada, just when Hanada thought that she was in the clear, and sliver-tipped arrow raced by, shaking Hanada from her lasp of attention, gas spilled from a hidden compartment and Hanada quickly covered her mouth and healed her breath. Hanada quickly leapt onto a nearby roof and started to run towards the nearest Anbu patrol path to warn the village of a group of forijors that were invading Naruto's home, Artemis watched as the female ninja raced away, she had had one of her hunters shoot near the girl to try and knock her out with a sleeping gas, but she escaped. Grumbling over the fact that they had to flee before the alarm could be raised. She signaled her hunters to gather, when they did she snapped her finger and the group disappeared, returning to Artemis camp in Texas, however before she could, one of her hunters asked her if perhaps they should take something of the target, 
so they could find him at a later date, Artemis nodded and the girl raced in and brought back a jumpsuit the target was known to wear, and then they were gone, like they never existed. Anko Mitarashi, Hana Inazuka, and Yugao Azuki were heading to Anko's home from the baby shower for their friend, Kurinai Yuhi, they weren't tried by any long shot, the night was still young, Anko asked if they would like a ladies movie night, so there they were, walking down the street, Anko lived near Naruto's place by about a block and they were talking about the blonde haired hero. I am telling you, that Gaki's denser than stone when a girl shows her feels to him, Hannah spoke to her friends, but at least he knows to run away from fan girls, the trio snicker. Huh, that boy may be dense in the head, but he has more than enough energy to run away from them, Yugao replied. One has to wonder what else he has energy for and for how long, Anko gigged, Yugao and Hannah blushed at the idea that Anko was driving at. Anko. They both shouted at their friend, Anko just snickered. What? We all know that Naruto is a virgin and Hinata has been trying to get him to date her since the day they first met, that girl from demon country was the closest to having sex with him, remember the report that Kakashi turned in. The two listening nodded, well that kid that is like a clone of Guy told him what she wanted so Naruto was able to keep his virginity, however I was able to sneak into the mission room some time later and in the S rank missions was one from demon country. Yugao and Hana were trying to wrap their minds around the fact that Anko broke into the mission room and not get caught. Anko, Hana began, how did you get in without having the Anbu guards becoming alerted? Anko smiled, simple, you guys were on duty and I asked you to look the other way as payback for a favor. I thought you went in because you need a mission because your boss need you out of the way, Yugao growled out, Anko nodded. That's true, anyway, the mission said that Naruto was to be either brought before the girl or his seed so that she could bear his child, for a million yen for his seed and a billion for him brought before her alive, when I showed the Hokage, our dear cage laughed me out of the office, thinking that it was a prank, shame too, all that money would have helped. With your dango bill, Hana and Yugao thought, Anko, sensing a disturbance in the party of dango glared at the source, Hana and Yugao slowly backed away as Anko started to go though Hansaya's for one of her jutsu before a noise caused all three to look towards the rooftops. There they saw Hanada running towards them and she looked drugged, then she slipped. Hanada, the trio shouted and leapt towards the falling girl. Hannah was the one to break her fall and the other two stood around the drugged girl. Hannah used a medical jutsu to check Hanada's body, she looked at her friends and gave them a look, Anko and Yugao sighed, Hanada was going to be fine. Why was she running like that? I mean, she usually isn't that fast, Anko said. Isn't that the direction of Naruto's place? Yugao asked. All three women looked at each other, Hannah picked up Hanada and raced towards the hospital while Anko and Yugao raced to Naruto's place, the duo were leaping roof to roof at top speed when Naruto's place came into view. Yugao pointed out a bowl of ramen that was spilled, Anko nodded at what seemed to be an arrow embedded in one of the posts, Naruto's door didn't seem to be have been forced open, but looks were not always what he seems in a world full of ninja, Anko leaped it onto Naruto's balcony and entered though there, Yugao went though the front door with her sword out and ready for use. Her eyes narrowed at the mess that was in the hall, pictures and jumpsuits littered the floor, there was a crushed instant ramen cup in the hallway, Yugao heard Anko curse, something about either the place was a pig pen before or after the break-in, a sound was heard behind the bathroom door. Anko raised her finger over her lips and gave the Yugao a nod, mentally counting to three, the duo smashed the door down, only to find the damn cat, Tora, who was in the corner shaking like a leaf in the fall in a windstorm. No one's here, Anko murmured under her breath, wait, where's Naruto, if I remember right, the ramen cup was fresh and Naruto hates not finishing his ramen, unless, Yugao and Anko looked at each other and flickered of Naruto's house towards the Hokage's tower, Crete, take it like a man and let me cut off that thing you call a dick you stupid perverted idiot blonde hair monkey, if I did I wouldn't be a man after you are done with me, Naruto replied to Zoe's outburst and yelped as Zoe's sword slashed over his head, giving him a much unwelcomed haircut, also I am no pervert another swipe interrupt him as he tried to dodge. I don't care. Now hold still so I can hit you. Rhea looked on at the two and shook her head, she was tired and was getting angry, she was a pregnant woman and even thought that the duo knew that, they were fighting right in front of her. No way. You are some messed up chick you know that. Naruto yelled as he backed flipped away from a nasty near miss, he landed on his feet and crossed his fingers and shouted Taju Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. Zoe hacked and coughed at all the smoke that surrounded her. Naruto grinned as his jutsu smoke irritated Zoe, this was short-lived as she unknowingly lashed out with her blade, killing several clones and hitting Naruto's jewels with the blood of the sword, he was down on his knees in seconds, his remaining clone looked at her with worry. 
Zoe raised her sword and was about to chuck it at what she thought as Naruto when all of a sudden Rhea shouted, enough. A wave of power raced from her and knocked Zoe down, dispelled the clone, and as for Naruto, he was still holding his area, Zoe and Naruto flinched at Rhea's glare. You two need to cool off, Zoe, Naruto here was trying to protect me and didn't mean to have had your clothes destroyed, Rhea waved her hand and a simple dress appeared on Zoe's body, there, all better, as for you Naruto, you do not strip a lady's clothes, even if you do not mean to, now I am tired and frustrated, as well as pregnant, now I Thor you two make up or I will show you why I am queen of the titans. Zoe and Naruto looked at each other and said sorry, Rhea nodded and laid down to take a nap, Zoe looked at Naruto and spoke, you are lucky lady Rhea likes you or I would have taken my pound of flesh. Naruto glared and spoke in a soft and low voice, drop it would you, being pregnant isn't a walk in the park, I should know. Zoe nodded absent-mindedly, yeah, I know that it is a hard, wait, did you just say you know what it is like to be pregnant? Yes, Zoe stared at Naruto, comma comma comma, you are scaring me now. Are you really a boy? Naruto fell on his head at Zoe's remark. Yes I am a boy, Zoe raised an eyebrow, I use a jutsu to turn myself into a girl with all the working parts, I was on a mission and this lady was dying and she was pregnant, so my friend Sakura, who was a medic a good one at that, had me become a girl and transplant the baby in me, it hurt more than anything I have been though and I wish to never have that happen to me again. Zoe eyed Naruto in a new light, she first thought that he was a pervert, now she was unsure, oh well she thought, perhaps I was a bit hasty, let's pretend that what happened never happened, okay. Okay, let's restart by telling each other our names, I am Naruto Uzumaki, Naruto raised his hand. Zoe Nightshade, she reached out and shook Naruto's hand, nice to meet you. Sue, now what, Naruto was very upset that he could not talk to his friends, it made no sense at all, he was the holder of all the tailed beast chakra, yet he could no longer feel anything from Kurama or the rest, it is as if they have never existed, Naruto looked over to the sleeping forms of Zoe and Rhea, they seemed so happy in their dreaming state, Zoe looked like a sleeping bunny with her legs kicking every once in a while. He sighed as he looked to the heavens above, he always felt that someone or something up in the sky was taking care of him but he never knew why, now he felt afraid, like he was being watched for other reasons from the shadows of his mind. Those eyes, he thought, why is it those eyes make me feel so powerless? I am a ninja of Konoha, hero of the fourth ninja war, I have fought against a goddess that was trying to trap everyone in a dreamlike state, I have felt helpless then, but not anything like this, the feeling that he was going to die never in his life felt so strong. Naruto took a deep breath in and let it out slowly, he knew that if he kept thinking those thoughts he was going to spiral into a state where he wouldn't be able to protect Rhea or Zoe, he didn't know why but he knew that if this Titan King Kronos got hold of Rhea's unborn son something bad would happen, he just knew that if he failed to do this mission he wasn't going home. And that frightened him more than anything else, he looked towards the night sky and watched the night sky. He thought back when he had first entered the Shinobi Academy, he recalled how he had thought ninjas were people that protected everyone and how they had everyone's respect, at that time he had thought that was what he wanted, everyone's respect and acknowledge his that time he had no power other than his bloodlines that his mother told him about when she had appeared to help him gain control of Kuruma. He knew of his ability to heal fast, also Kuruma boosted this, but his mother said that both she and his father had powers that may or may not have been passed on to him, as of yet he had to unlock them, if he had them at all, his second cousin, Karen, had all the Uzumaki's bloodline powers, chains made of chakra, advanced healing, and the clan's powerful life force. A twig snapped in the forest and Naruto flinched, damn it, he inwardly cursed, I am here thinking of things that mean little of notice right now, I need to focus on the now, know the what ifs ands maybes. He fingered a shuriken and debated if he should go and see what made that noise, he waited to see if he could hear anything out of the norm, he increased the flow of chakra to his nose, ears, and eyes to increase their abilities, another twig broke and Naruto spotted a figure moving away from the camp, Naruto acted fast and made three clones to stay to protect the camp, he himself raced after the figure. Naruto leapt from the forest floor to the trees to increase his speed, tree running for a Konoha ninja was something that one learned rather fast to get to and from places, also the roots of trees and low branches would slow down his enemy while Naruto had to just move up or down while still moving forward, seeing that his foe was starting to get closer, Naruto made a couple of clones to surround the figure in a pinnier move. However the figure had other plans, the person reached out and grabbed a tree branch. The figure then flipped around and launched towards Naruto, Naruto and his clones were too surprised to react when the figure cut down the shadow clones while kicking Naruto in the face, Naruto fell to the ground with a thud, 
He then rolled on his back to avoid a being implied by a spear that appeared in his opponent's hands, the weapon sunk into the ground by several inches where Naruto's head once occupied, his enemy then grasped his weapon and flicked the earth towards Naruto's eyes. Acting fast Naruto sent though the hand signs for an air bullet, as the dirt flew by his face he took a breath, his foe was racing forward, thinking that Naruto was unbalanced by the underhand tactic, his surprise when he was hit by a blast of air made Naruto's night as the figure made a loud male scream in pain, the figure flew backwards and impaled himself via a low tree branch, Naruto's right hand grasped at his foe's throat as his left unhooded the male figure. The face that came into view was unmistakably male, he had black hair and a ragged bread, but it was his eyes that drew Naruto's attention, they were a sickly yellow that held no love for peace or kindness, no, they were filled by an untold level of hate, disgust, and anger at the world. Who are you? Why were you spying on us? Naruto asked his prisoner. He just spat blood onto Naruto's face. You will get nothing out of me boy, he said with a tone that said that he though Naruto is no threat. Naruto, not liking the tone and the blood on his face, slammed the mon's head into the tree several times, blood spewed from the mon's lips. You will answer me you I will make your death painful and slow, Naruto threatened, the being just laughed in a dark manner. To late brat, I am already dead in the next minute. So whatever you do is useless, the branch went thought along, cut a part of my liver, and severed several major arteries and veins, Naruto hated the dark mon's smug smile and the feeling something was off, however, the man seemed to be telling the truth for lo and behold the man did die, Naruto reached out with his left hand and checked for a pulse finding none he released his dead foe, he then turned around and started to walk back to the camp. Big mistake, as soon as Naruto had gone several feet a force smashed into his back, Naruto stumbled forward from the surprise blow, another quick blow to his legs and Naruto was on the ground, Naruto rolled to the side to avoid an axe kick that left a crater where his body once was, however he was struck and cut by a spear's tip, blood sprayed from the wound and Naruto gasped for the shock. You know, one should always make sure their opponent is dead before turning your back, it is even more so when facing one that has no heart to begin with, the man spoke as he towered over Naruto's form that lied on the ground, I thought that you would know that boy, considering whose blood runs in your body. Naruto's eyes widened only slightly, here he was a trained ninja and warrior played like a fool, then the comment of whose blood caught his ear, whose blood. The question had the formerly dead man taken back and it showed by the shifting muscles on his face, his hair covered his eyes and Naruto was suddenly felt like the night just got colder and eviler, if there was such a thing, you don't know, the man started, then full out laughter sprang out of his mouth, full of dark malice of the moment, one of our greatest sworn enemies has a decedent and he doesn't even know the power that he has on the tips of his fingers, this is too grand of a joke. His glaze locked into Naruto's eyes, it is too bad for you brat, if we had found you sooner you would have made a great addition to our cause, so I am afraid you are going to die here, Naruto started to rise to try to escape, but the man reached out with a foot and started to press on his stomach, I am afraid that there are no way for you to escape boy. Red chakra sprang around Naruto and the man howled as it burned his foot, he then kicked Naruto's body away and Naruto flew though the air, the chakra around him protected him from the kick but then Naruto went though a tree with a bone crushing and snapping sound, the tree fell to the side as Naruto rolled on the ground, the glow died as the chakra started to heal him, guys. Naruto thought. Naruto. Finally we're though, there's something that has been keeping us from reaching you, none of us know when the connection will be shut off so let's make the most of it, said Kuruma. I am in a fight with a man that is kicking me around and I killed him only three minutes ago. Okay and why are you saying this? Inquired Goku. Because that same man is coming closer with a sword eager to behead me, Naruto answered as he watched as the man staked forward with a massive sword that was pitch black that had strange tribal markings, a sickly green mist glowed around it, Naruto summoned his chakra cloak to try to give off a display of power, if anything the man didn't even finch form the raw power that Naruto was giving off. So you can use power of another and not your own, you pathetic boy. One uses his own power as well as another to increase his own, you on the other hand use only another's power, the man said mockingly to Naruto, Naruto scowled and started to form a Rasengan using the cloak's power in one hand, seeing this the man took his sword and trusted it into Naruto's abdomen, Naruto screeched as the blade slide though his muscles and spine, the tip of the sword embedded into the earth, too bad for you, that is all boy 8 nanograms to be over in a few seconds. The man was right, Naruto's chakra cloak flickered and died, Naruto listened to his friend's voices get cut off as the chakra from his body and the biju was absorbed into the sword, the mon's grin told Naruto that his foe knew what he was doing and Naruto was powerless to stop him, Naruto felt tired and his eyes started to close. Yes go to sleep, 
Soon you will no longer need to worry about anything. The mon's words were interrupted when an arrow struck the mon's hands. The man howled as he let go of his weapon. Naruto's eyes drifted to a woman with an arrow cocked in her bow. That is for attacking the boy. The woman spoke with cold anger. And this, she raised her bow and arrow, is for my aunt. The arrow flew though the air and struck true, hitting the man in the eye and went though the other side. The man fell and both he and his weapon turned into dust. Who are you? Naruto asked with his pain-filled voice. The woman frowned and waved her hand. After she did so Naruto felt better. There was no evidence that he had gotten into a fight. Thank you, he said as he rose. As he did took a closer look at the woman. She stood at five foot four. Her red hair was braided into a single braid that hung over her shoulder. Her eyes reminded Naruto of the night sky for some reason. In order of what you asked, Leto and you're welcome. So you are the one that is traveling with my aunt. Not much it seems, but then looks can be disarming. Who is your aunt? asked Naruto. Rhea of course, her brother is my father. I give my thanks that you are taking care of her, the being that you were fighting was one of a few that are in the employment of Kronos. I have been tailing this one for weeks and only now have been able to defeat him. Now, she said as she turned away, you need to head back to the camp. Rhea must reach the mountain in time to give birth and her husband will send more enemies to stop her. I will do my best to take care of as many as I can, but you will have to fight several more enemies. I understand. Hearing Naruto's answer Leto raced off deeper into the forest, Naruto watched as C disappeared and started to walk back to the camp, Appen returning he saw that all of his clones still there, he looked at them and gave the all clear sign, nodding to him his clones dispelled and Naruto got the feedback of the memories, finding that nothing happened he walked over to Zoe and shook her awake. Ah, uh, she said still half asleep, it's your turn to keep watch Zoe. Anko and Yagao raced though the doors of the Hokage's tower, the lady at the desk yelled at them to slow down, but the duo didn't listen, they reached the doors of leading into the office of Tsunade, as they raced in, papers flew everywhere. What is the meaning of this? yelled Tsunade. She had just finished all of the paperwork for the past week and now it was spread around the room like confetti, she glared at the two who had ruined her nighttime happiness, perhaps ill have them take only D-rank missions that mostly include finding the demon cat Tora, she thought darkly. Anko and Yagao's backs shivered at the look their leader was giving them. Thinking fast they quickly spoke saying how they had seen Hanada and how Naruto was missing, Tsunade's brow grew a tick mark that only grew larger when it was apparent that, that the duo weren't going to stop talking over each other or slow down their words. Enough you two, now will you tell me what's going on or else I will have you doing D-ranked missions for a year. Yes Hokage, Tsunade sat back in her chair and let out a sigh, she looked towards her to subordinates and leaning towards them she glared at Anko, start talking. Well you see myself and my friends were walking home we saw Hanada racing on the rooftops heading for us, as we watched she started to sway and fell, acting fast, we were able to save her, myself and Yagao headed towards where she was coming from, Hanada was taken to the hospital by Hana. Tsunade nodded slowly to Anko's words, I do not see how this relates to Naruto as of yet. She's getting there Lady Tsunade, said Shizune as she grabbed the bottle of sake that her master was reaching towards, Tsunade growled as her sake was taken away. Anyway, when we saw that the trail lead to Naruto's home, we was an arrow embedded in a post with a bowl of spilled ramen, the door to his home was forced open and we found evidence that several person unknown were looking for something or Naruto, one of his jumpsuits is missing thought, spoke up Hana, much to Anko's irk. Then there's no time to waste, send for all senior ninja and the remaining Konoha 9 to look for Naruto and those strangers, move. Yes Hokage, comma comma comma, the Konoha hot springs men's side. Yo Kakashi, hum. What is it guy? You and your unyouthfulness. Anyway are you thinking of training another team of genin yet? No guy. Team 7 was my first and last team that I will take. What if instead of a energy sucking tree of doom the lands are invaded by an unknown army that came from the western lands? My dear rival lighten up. The western lands have always been unknown to us here in the eastern lands. Mountains are far too dangerous for any army to cross without lives being lost. Even if an army came by land I was ninja would let the nations know as well as Suna and the land of swords, also the seas that are on either side of the border are too powerful for any ship to cross. But even still we know nothing. If there is anyone on the other side they would know nothing of our lands as well Kakashi, and if an army invaded the alliance would fight them together. I hope so guy, I hope so, a sound of a door opening stopped the conversation from going any farther, several voices drifted into the, the area where ex Juan guy and soon to be Hokage Kakashi were. Lee knock it off will you? When are you going to learn that you don't need to run laps around the village every time you lose a bet? My youth will not be dimmed by your laziness Shikamaru. Troublesome. Oh give it a rest. I wished that Akamaru was allowed in here again thought. 
Hiba, your dog is the size of a small horse now. So. Kakashi and Guy looked to the three that were talking. Rock Lee, Shikamaru Nara, and Kiba Inazuka were at the entrance. They had changed little after the war to the outside observer, but to the trained eyes of, of their peers, they were still carrying scars, the fourth war had taken more out of the ninja of the element lands than most realized, many had quit or retired due to PTSD or from injuries, that's why Kakashi was worried, out of the 100,000 plus ninja and samurai army, only 35% came home, if the nations were attacked, there only would be a token of resistance before the nations fell. Kakashi listened to his friends and comrades talked about old times and looked to the night sky, as he did a meteor streak from the west heading east. Naruto twisted and turned in his sleep as Zoe looked on, she had just woken up 15 minutes ago to take her turn of the watch, it was at first fairly quiet with the occasional sound of a nighttime animal in the distance when Naruto started to do what he was doing. No, no, stop it, stop it. Naruto called out in his sleep, at his cry Rhea awoke. What's going on? She inquired as C looked at the form of Naruto as he trashed around on the ground in pain, he was now screaming at an unknown terror that attacked him in his sleep. I have no idea my lady, he was fine when he fell asleep, whatever this is started about 9 minutes ago, Zoe spoke with concern, she had no reason to feel for this strange human, but she did, she looked at his form as it jerked about and tears fell from his closed eyes, I had tried to wake him but he is too far in this that I can do nothing. Rhea nodded to the nymph, she was telling the truth. As far as Rhea could tell, Rhea had no reason to distrust Zoe, but this was not normal, Naruto's screams were echoing over the land and Rhea feared that one of her fellow titans would notice, acting fast she made a soundproof barrier around Naruto, then she reached out and grabbed Naruto and Zoe, she then transported herself and her companions several miles away. We should be safe for a bit here, she said quietly, the area where she had taken the group was a simple cave, this is near Mount, Ida, where we are going. Zoe nodded and looked around. The cave was small for all three of them but it was workable for the night, she signed and sat down, both she and Rhea looked at the pained form of Naruto, Naruto was the duo's thought, please be safe. Artemis Camp, Texas, Artemis was sitting by the campfire when she heard footsteps heading her way, she turned around to see Rhea entering her camp, seeing the look on Rhea's face she groaned in her head, Artemis really did not want to tell her that she failed to find the boy that Rhea asked her to find. Artemis remembered when she was just a few years of age the story of what really happened when Rhea was carrying Zeus, how a strange human male saved Rhea from Kronos minions, she had thought of it as a wise tell, but when a few years ago when Hestia was out traveling, the truth of the story was giving. Hestia was in another realm when she had saw a strange boy with whisperers in a kill me orange jumpsuit, when she came back she told her mother of what she saw, even thought the boy was only around five, Rhea was overjoyed, she said all kinds of things, mainly how he had promised her he wouldn't die and how she would either beat him up for making her worry or kiss him. Artemis was even more surprised when her lieutenant, asked to go and find him, Artemis knew that she and Rhea had history with each other but she never said how, when she said that she knew of the male and gave him the utmost respect, Artemis only stood there gasping like a fish, Zoe Nightshade, the one that was betrayed by Heck the Jerk and had a major dislike of males, liked a boy. Then Rhea asked her, Artemis, to find this Naruto person and bring him to her, Artemis almost fainted in shock, she had was uneasy about it but Rhea made several strong points and Zoe told her of her history with the boy, Artemis was unsure of what to think after that, but she agreed to find Naruto. Now I have to tell her ladyship that I failed due to the fact he wasn't anywhere near the village and myself and my senior hunters were discovered before I could track him down, I hope the jumpsuit will be able to appease her, Artemis mused as Rhea started over to her. Artie how was the trip? Rhea asked with a smile, Artemis gulped and told the elder immortal the events when she was on the mission. Comma comma comma, it was a quiet night on Olympus with all the immortals asleep, that changed when all of a sudden, what do you mean you didn't find him? Hera and Zeus leapt out of bed, thinking that they were under an invasion, Zeus cursed as he dropped his bolt, the night light of doom, on his foot, causing it to go off in the room. Hera was not happy. After the shock of the blast she lunged at her husband to use her fists on his form till she was tried enough to go back to sleep, poor Zeus was still in shock when Hera's fist met his jaw. Comma comma comma, Ares was in his room asleep having his version of a nightmare, the world was under attack, but it was the invaders that scared Ares, it was an army of build aid bears singing I love you and saying things like let's be friends, the bears were also riding my little ponies and leading the army was Barney and the four Teletubbies, worse the more he killed them the louder the songs and voices came and they multiplied. No, die you freaks of all things of the evils of cuteness. He yelled out in his sleep, the army had him trapped and was trying to put a Hello Kitty costume on him, 
and large explosion went off and he was awake in seconds after falling from his bed. My head. He groaned out. That's it. I am never again letting Dite talk me into helping her with her new Hello Kitty line. Comma comma comma. Finished at last. Hermes spoke softly as the last paper was signed. He had spent most of her day trying to finish his paperwork that was starting to build up. He rose from his sit and opened a file cabinet. Once this is in I can get some sleep, he thought with a mental sign. What do you mean you didn't find him? He jumped at the rather loud and angry tone, slamming his head into the ceiling. Papers flew everywhere due to speed and force of his jump. After he go this head unstuck he looked around. All of his work now scattered around the room. He just went to a corner and started to cry. Comma comma comma. Mr. D was walking down a street heading for a bar. Tonight I will get drunk and good he thought. Just as he was about to enter the bar a loud sound like thunder reached his ears. Fearing for his safety he looked at the bar and thought. I'll be back for you. Then he raced towards the camp before his father started to look for him. Comma comma comma. Gently does it. Okay stop it there. Athena nodded and twisted a knob. She and her brother, Hephaestus, looked at their prototype. It was shaped like Pac-Man that had Omega sign, on either side of its mouth. How are we doing brother? Athena asked. Hephaestus gave a proud smile. We just need to add some fuel, connect the drive to the mainframe, put in a power source and we're finished with Project Darkness. I still do not understand why we picked that name, she spoke to herself, so we should be able to see what monsters do in Tartarus finally and see if we can check on our foes in how long. In, oh, in an hour and thirty minutes, hopefully nothing happens, the compound we just added is highly unstable and needs thirty minutes to settle, if it is shaken, boom, Athena and Hephaestus looked at each other and grinned like deranged evil mad scientists. Fate, however, wasn't kind to them, just as time was almost up, boom. The two immortals jumped away from the prototype and hide behind an overturned table as an explosion shook Hephaestus' workroom, after a few seconds of tension, they relaxed and looked over the table towards the machine. Big mistake. The prototype exploded in their faces, covering them in oil, scrap metal, and grime. The force of the blast sent the duo into the wall, Hephaestus coughed up smoke and Athena's hair was aflame. Father must have dropped his bolt again, Athena coughed out. Tell me about it, came Hephaestus' deadpan reply. Comma comma comma. Artemis looked at the enraged Rhea with a bit of fear, Artemis thought that Rhea was going to be mad, but not to this level. Now dear, Artemis shivered at the tone, you have ten seconds to tell me that you at least he not leave barehanded, or else, Rhea left her words fade as Zoe came running over with a jumpsuit. Lady Rhea, Zoe said in a worried and quick voice, can you please wait until the story is finished? Oh, and here, Zoe handed over the jumpsuit, Rhea's eyes widened at the sight of the suit. This is, Zoe and Artemis nodded, it's one of his jumpsuits that I grabbed when we left. Rhea nodded and spoke two words, thank you, Zoe smiled and nodded to the Titanus, Rhea then started to glow, seeing this, Zoe closed her eyes, after the glow faded Artemis turned to her lieutenant. So, she started before noticing that Zoe was walking away, Zoe. Not now my lady, Artemis frowned and started to worry, she has never heard Zoe sound so defeated and depressed, she had seen her defeated after a difficult hunt that ended in failure and depressed after one of her fellow hunters die, but not like this, Artemis started to wonder why she was the way she was acting. Unless, Artemis shook her head, after what happened to Zoe when she met Hercules Zoe became weary and distrustful of men, she was always was so quick to being cold to them, all but a rare few, yet she always held this Naruto in high regard and respect, there is no way at all that this was not connected to something her own mother told her, mom, Artemis thought as she looked to the night sky. Two figures in cloaks sat on the monument that overlooked Konoha, they watched as various ninja jumped from roof to roof looking for their hero, several Anbu ninja and normal ninja either ran or jumped by the duo, the two were never seen, as they did not wish to be seen or felt, one ninja went right though the taller of the two, the one that was short in stature and seemingly older than his friend took a sip of some tea. So, how long until they find out that he is going to be gone for some time? Comma comma comma. What's with the silence? You know why. Oh come on. It was just one little goddess. What harm can she do? What harm? Because of her Konoha is thinking he was kidnapped and will be on the lookout for clues for how she and her followers got into the village. Then there's the fact Zoe, the nymph, took one of Naruto's jumpsuits. And what we did. We were doing what we were ordered to do. Send him back in time somewhere where our foes cannot get their hands on him. And what great jobs you did. The two beings did a backflip to avoid a sword that slammed where they were just sitting. The strength of the blow caused a blast of air that reviled light under the cloak. The taller of the duo was a male, seemingly in his thirties. He had long brown hair tied into a ponytail, 
he wore armor that seemed like it had seen battles and the forge many a times, a sword hung at his left side and a dagger on his right, his stance said that he was no stranger to fighting and that he was a veteran at it. The other was another story, while the first was built like a fighter, the second had a build that said he or she wasn't a fighter, however it did say that the second cloaked figure was old and did know some fighting skill. Their attacker was another story, he was a tall man around six feet tall, he had a ragged beard and hair, both black in color, he had a massive sword in his hand, black in color with eerie green coming off it, eyes filled with hate glared at the duo with the glimmer of bloodlust. You seem surprised right now, that the power that his boy wields with his fingertips is mine to wield, the dark man said to the duo, he raised his left hand while leaving the right to hold onto his weapon that had turned into a spear that he held upright, he flexed his fingers on his left hand and breathed in deeply. You know, I must really thank you too, if it wasn't for your actions of sending Naruto to Crete I never would have obtained this power, the power to wield the elements like they are no played on an instrument. We do not want your thanks, traitor, said the one with the sword, his hand was on the handle of his sword, ready to draw it at a moment's notice, he then spoke to his comrade, my friend flee quickly, I will give you some time to report that our enemy has come to this land. Good luck my friend, the second spoke, the being then turned and started to run away. The dark Naruto smirked, you think that you can stall me? He then raised his arms out to the sides, I control the powers of the brat that you sent to the past, only he can defeat me and you know that he doesn't have the power to do so, even if he gains the power he will be facing his own nightmares in order to reach me, also there is a village of bystanders that think the brat has been kidnapped, if they see us fighting they will think that you helped and that I am Naruto, you would be forced to fight those who you swore to protect. And you would just have them come anyway, I know you and your kind, you come in like a hero until you show your true colors. And you just play hero, in truth you are nothing but a coward that hides behind your master and obeys him without question, I have no one that I answer to but myself, you might think of me as a villain but in truth I am more of an savoir than you are, I will give the mortal humans what they desire in the darkest parts of their hearts and bring it forth, I am giving them everything they want, and now, the dark man sprinted forward with his weapon. You die. The one named Jordan unleashed power in a shockwave that blew his foe back, his sword he drew to parry an overhead blow, when the two weapons connected a massive gust of wind exploded out ward over the village and trees around them. Zoe gently dabbed a soaked rag on Naruto's forehead, she looked at his fevered and sweaty face. Rhea looked on as Zoe tended to the boy with worry on her face, in the time that she had got to know Naruto, Rhea had started to see him as a child she never had, he had this feeling of warmth and innocence to him that reminded her of a child but with the wisdom gained from time, blood seeped from his mouth as he coughed. I do not understand what's wrong with him. Zoe growled out as she flicked a stray hair out of her eyes, it is as if something that was a part of him was ripped out and his body is trying to adjust to the lack of whatever it is, and it is slowly killing him from the strain. I have no idea of what to do either, from what I can sense thought it seems that someone was able to heal him, as for the why I do not know, as whatever or whoever did this is long gone. Rhea took her eyes from the form of Naruto and took her gaze to her unborn son. Rhea was utterly worried about her friend, her domains over comfort and ease should be helping the blonde but for some reason it wasn't working. Rhea ran her fingers though her raven hair and growled in frustration over the situation, she hated feeling helpless. Ever since her dear husband ate her first child, Rhea swore to herself to find a way to never feel helpless, Kronos eating her next four children only made her want the madness and her inability to make a difference to end, that she got an idea, it was a hope that she feared that might be unfounded, but it was Naruto's only hope at this rate, Rhea used a bit of her power and soon a pair of owl lions appeared. Seeing Zoe's eyebrow twitch, Rhea spoke up. I have an idea Zoe, but it is risky at best, if Naruto is to survive whatever is affecting him, one of them could help. My lady, who is them? Zoe inquired, the tone of Rhea's voice said that the female titan was uneasy about whom she was to ask. Rhea was quiet as she thought over what to say, there is an old race that may or may not help us, the reason I am uneasy to ask is because this race is amidst in a civil war that has lasted for longer than even I dare ask one of the sides in helping Kronos for some reason while the other side may help us, however. However, nothing, it is nothing Zoe dear, I may be imagining things, but if they do send someone, treat whoever comes with the utmost respect, Rhea turned to the pair of lions that were on the waiting. Please go and find the ones I seek to help this boy, his life hangs in the balance, as soon as Rhea said this Zoe noted something seemed to had changed with the lions, before the lions seemed like they were just average lions that Rhea summoned, after Rhea had spoke they gained a twinkle in their eyes like they knew of who or what Rhea was talking about, in a flash the two disappeared into the air leaving a stunned Zoe and Rhea. Naruto had been running in the sewers of his mind for what seemed like days to him. Blood dripped from multiple cuts on his body where he was attacked, 
His first jumpsuit that he wore on the day he first went to the academy was on him now. Naruto raced around a corner and pressed his back against the walls. Water swooshed around where he had ran though. Naruto looked at himself. For some reason he was now in the body of an five-year-old with all the traits of one. In his shacking hands was a single kanai that was chipped and worn down. Sounds echoed off the walls. Demon loser no one wants you so take a hint brat and worse kept being heard in his ears as he tried to calm down. It's not real it's not real Naruto kept repeating to himself. Green lit up the passageways with an sickly glow. Naruto was trying to reach where the seal was but now he was lost in the tunnels of his mindscape. Tears of terror, pain, and fear fell down his face. Ah, is the fake me gonna cry for his mommy and daddy? Naruto yipped as he ducked and raced away on all fours from a punch that went thought the wall where his head was. Come on, we both know that you are a coward but know that man was right. You are weak and I am tired of listening to you go on about protecting those that once hurt us. Yami, dark, Naruto watched as Naruto, the fake as he liked to call him, raced away like a beaten dog. The four limb run only increased that view. He then teleported to the front of Naruto after he had gone several feet. He then kicked Naruto in the chest causing Naruto to fly off with blood spraying out his mouth. Naruto slammed into the far wall with a mighty crash and went though. Bricks from the wall fell around and on Naruto. Yami Naruto skipped over to where Naruto lay. Oh Naruto come out and play why why why, Yami Naruto sang as he pretended to not know where Naruto was. Some ruble shifted and Yami Naruto grinned. Odama Rasengan, he shouted as he drilled into the place where the rumble moved. To his twisted joy there was much screaming, until poof, a clone of course, he thought as he looked down into the pit he had just made. To his left a brick poofed and Naruto yelled out as he slashed the tendons on the back of his darker half in half. Yami Naruto yelled in pain as he fell to the ground. Naruto did not let up his attack. Naruto raised his kanai and stabbed downwards into Yami Naruto's spine. That was the plan anyway. Naruto's darker half was able to twist his body away from the blow while at the same time using a brick in his hands brain Naruto. Naruto fell down as blood dripped down the side of his face where he was struck. Naruto almost lost his grip on his weapon, but thanks to his training he was able to hold on. One rule he learned that was not interfered with was that you never let go of your weapon, no matter what, however Naruto knew he had several major disadvantages that his foe knew of, and was using to his favor. Yami Naruto was in the form when Naruto first met him in his 16-year-old body. Naruto was in his 5-year-old body, that meant that Yami Naruto had the height, weight, endurance, muscle memory, reach, and pretty much all of Naruto's jutsu. Even worse for Naruto, he had all of Naruto's skill at that age with the ability to use it to the fullest. Naruto only had a smaller, slightly faster, and more agile body than his darker half, and in the form he was in now, injuries that could be shrugged off when he was a teen now could be fatal blows. Damn it, Naruto cursed as avoided being brained in the same place. He wobbled as he tried to keep himself from blacking out. Black spots started to form in his right eye as he tried to fight off the concussion. Yami Naruto, sensing weakness, spied an opening, acting on it he throw the brick. Naruto ducked under the crown object, but that left him open to an blow to his left side. Yami Naruto pressed on by getting up on his now healed legs. Once he was up he drove his fists into Naruto's stomach. Naruto went down and vomited. You are weak. Yami Naruto spoke to his counterpart, another punch to the face, you were nothing, blood spewed out of Naruto's broken nose, you think that you can save everyone from the pain of war and hatred? A kick to the side, I thought that it was your ninja way to never break a promise, let's see if you can sing a different tune real soon. Why, AAR, you doing this, Naruto wheezed out as he tried to breathe, Yami Naruto smirked as he reached down, he then grabbed Naruto by the throat and lifted him to eye level an arm's distance away. Naruto kicked and clawed at Yami Naruto's arm to escape to no avail. Naruto was no match to his foe's greater strength. Why? Because because of you and your actions those that have harmed us go on with their lives unpunished. We were feared and respected because of the war. We killed all who stood in our way but you just had to find a way to save everyone from the pain of war. Well guess what, they should all suffer for what they did to us. Yami Naruto started to squeeze Naruto's throat, he also raised his other hand, so I waited, after all. It was years before you were able to reach me the first time, I waited and I plotted on by revenge on you. Then that monster or demon appeared and chased you though the village, and you came here to a land where there is no chakra and no, one, two, save, you. At each word Naruto's darker half used his hand to break Natuto's bones one after another. Naruto screamed from the pain, he bucked in Yami Naruto's hands, Yami Naruto laughed at the original's pain, he presided to drop kick Naruto away from him. Naruto bounced off the ceiling then to the floor like an rag doll, however Naruto got a luck blow in, as he fell back down he slashed with his weapon, cutting into Yami Naruto's right eye and cheek. 
Ah! Oh. Yami Naruto screamed as he covered the now useless orb, Naruto seeing that his foe was preoccupied, took aim, he throw his kanai true and watched as his darker half was hit in the sweet spot, the jugular notch, the kanai cut though the windpipe, the vertebral veins, and embedded itself hilt deep, Yami Naruto twitched and fell down dead, Naruto was stunned at the lucky blow, after what had seemed like days a single strike with his weapon killed his foe, he didn't even want to kill him, bloody water lapped against Naruto's form as he sat on the ground, tired from his lack of rest and mental shock, he just stared as he foe bled out, his eyes staring lifelessly into Naruto's own. Seven stand with sword and shield and seven foes that darkness reviled. Shall fight for the kingdom lost. Victory will not be without cost. And once the king has been reinstated, shall darkness be once more sedated. A word of warning to the wise. If the king shall fall none shall survive. An old man read to his granddaughter and grandson, he looked at the children that sat on the ground from his rocking chair. There was a tapestry over the fireplace with the design of Iowa, this poem has been told to each generation of our kin, it it's of remembrance of the true king, you see long ago the whole elemental nations wasn't anything like it is today, long before the rabbit goddess there was only one kingdom, the name of which has been lost to history, it was ruled by the king and queen who ruled with peace throughout the land. What happened grandpa? asked the six-year-old girl. Yeah tell us, the younger five-year-old said excitedly. The old man chuckled well you see you have to wait. Now, the king and queen were said to be related to beings made of light and power. These beings were very powerful in their own way but several stood out. They were the first and the most powerful of their kind, but all of them worshipped and obeyed the one they called the master, but one day one of the beings rebelled against the master, he took a third of all the beings and went to war, his brother defeated him after a long battle with many deaths on each side, he then fled to the land where he spread his shadows over the land, the kings and queens repeatedly defeated him and his forces. What happened then? Well he got smart, instead of doing head on attacks he instead started to influence people. Soon he was able to control the government and plunge the land into darkness. The last king and queen fell to his words and led him into the land with open arms. However, a simple handmaiden took the child of the royals and fled. Because of her actions the betrayer was not able to kill off the royal family, the beings seeing that the land had been plunged into darkness, helped the two to escape, to make sure that no one followed them they raised the great mountain chain that split the land in two, the worst of the land became the west while the east was the land that the handmaiden fled to, the beings also created a barrier so that the traitors could not pass by air or by sea. Why? The beings knew that the enemy would try to attack the east and turn it into a land of shadow. And to this day they lie in wait in the shadows of the west. Waiting for the day they can attack the elemental nations, the handmaiden and the young heir hide somewhere in the lands here and disappeared into history, it is said that one day the enemy will break through the barrier and attack these lands when the one who is to be king comes once more, and on that day the enemy will once more appear, the old man finished his last words in a low voice so low that his grandkids thought he just took a odd sip of air. Okay Ichigo, Rukia, time for bed, make sure to give your gramps a hug goodnight, the children's mother called them, the two got up and gave their grandpa a hug. G night night grandpa Rashi the two said and left, their mother came in and looked at her father. I still remember when you told me that folk tale, when will you stop filling their heads up of the land beyond the mountains? I wish that you would instead tell them about being a ninja, that's far more believable than your fantasy, she told him, he just stared into her eyes, making her uncomfortable, after a moment he looked towards the heath. If only, was his replay, if only, the old man's eyes looked into the hearth as the fire crackled and spat. He knew that the story was like a ramblings of an old man that was losing his mind to the past. But he knew that the story was true, once when he was a boy he and several of his friends went into the mountains to see if they could go farther than anyone before, they did, but not without a price, his best friend had lost his life to one of those things that took over the west, those red eyes that showed joy in ripping into his friend's flesh and his screams in pain was he was eaten alive, no, what lied beyond the mountains he knew was no joke or fantasy of the mind. Flashback Come on, cried a boy of ten to his friends this way. Hang on a sec will you, Tenary, Aki hurt her leg, we should go back, called out another boy next to a girl, the two boys that closer to the Tenary just looked at the other two. We will just go over this hill and we will come back okay. Said the taller one, Rashi, his other friend, Onoki, nodded in agreement, the trio left their friends where they were, the trio reached the top and gasped at the sight before them, in front of them was a massive arch made of rock, symbols glowed with a white light all around the rock. What is this place? asked Tenary in awe, the others gave no answer, 
The archway was one that showed great strength and beatify in its form. As they stood gaping at the natural wonder they heard a sound of crying coming from the shadows of the other side of the arch, who's there? A young woman appeared on the other side, the boys blushed at the sight, she was drop dead hot, the boys all had nose bleeds from the sight that would forever be ingrained in their minds as they went to bed for years to come. Oh please, can you help me? I hurt my leg and I cannot set it myself, oh please can you help? She asked with a kind and pained voice, Teneri and Rashi started forward, Onoki also started forward but stopped, his hive was telling him, no, screaming at him that they were in danger. Oi, Teneri, Rashi, wait, something not right, Onoka called out, Rashi stopped and noticed that Onoki was right, the air seemed to be full of a feeling of wrongness, Teneri kept on going and passed though the under the arch, he never noticed the increase then decrease of light on the symbols. The woman smiled and spoke to Teneri in a sweet voice full of praise, thank you for helping me, it's good to know that there are some people still in the world that are willing to help others. Teneri blushed as he listened to the beautiful lady's praise, it's nothing, he murmured as he went down on his knees and started to tend to her, the lady moaned as he touched a sensitive spot, Rashi looked at the scene with envy and uneasy, envy because his friend was tending to a very attractive woman, at the same time he was uneasy, as he watched shadows from all around started to move towards Teneri and the woman like hunting rock snakes. Onoki also was bordering on uneasy to fear, his hive of bees were on the verge of fleeing outright from the fleeing that the woman was not what she looked like, as a member of a major clan, the Kamazuru clan, he had been trained to listen to his instincts, as his father told him sometimes the body knows if it is in danger or not, and this was one of those times. Teneri finished wrapping up the lady's leg and stood up, there you go, I have to go now. So soon, the woman asked softly, Teneri nodded, yeah, I need to get back with the group, it was nice meeting you. You may call me Effa, Teneri, she gave a warm smile and Teneri turned around, alarm bells went off in the heads of Onoki and Reshi. As Teneri walked away the woman's hair covered her eyes, the shadows that were moving surrounded her in a sea of darkness, Onoki and Reshi tried to call out to Teneri to run, but their voices caught in their throats, Teneri just kept on walking, unaware of what was going on behind him. Wham! What the? Teneri exclaimed as he rebounded off a barrier that wasn't there before blocking him from reaching his friends, he rolled on the ground kicking off dust, he got up and raced towards the arch, same result, I can't get though. Of course not Teneri. A voice said behind him, before anyone could blink, Teneri's throat was grabbed behind, such a tender and sweet boy you are, it is too bad that you cannot escape, oh, I know, you can live with me, forever. Teneri started to scream as his right leg was ripped off. He fell as the hand that was holding him released him, Onok, Reshi, and when Teneri flipped over on his back, looked at the thing that Effa had become, her body, once a thing that would many women who die for was now deformed and hideous, a web of dirty hair like a scarecrow's fell down her back, her eyes glowed dark crimson red in the shadows, her nails had grown into claws that were dripping with blood from Teneri's leg that was held in her hands. She opened her mouth that stretched from ear to ear and reviled her fangs and long tongue, the shadows seemed to have formed a cloak around her and hid most of her body, Teneri crawled as fast as he could away from her with a trail of blood, Effa ignored him as she started to eat his leg, um, it's been so long time since I ate fresh meat, the meat here is so stringy and rotten and your meat is so tender and good, you should have known that no one is what they seem. She then saw that he was trying to escape her reach, she gave a smile that was so wrong on her face because it was full of joy that did not reach her eyes, why are you leaving me? She asked in a sweet voice like the one she used to talk to him before she changed, I promised that you could live with me forever so why are you trying to run away? There is no escape from this land, only to the next. Because you're a monster, Teneri yelled hysterically. Effa looked down and clenched her hands, Onoki and Reshi gasped as the air around the immediate area started to freeze, darkness covered everything in a fog-like manner that burned their flesh until only a dim light remained, where once the sun was shining on, now looked like a firestorm's ash covered the area in twilight. Then you will either learn your place as my slave or die. She roared as she appeared with her left hand though Teneri's back, Onoki sent out a wave of bees to attack the monster, however, seeing the swarm, she moved her hand like she was slapping someone. A wave of darkness left her hand and hit the bees, as soon as the darkness struck a bee it died by being burned by a shadowy fire, then covered in ice, Onoki gasped at the loss of so many bees from his hive. Reshi then tried his luck, even thought he knew no jutsu, he attacked the monster by throwing some rocks at her face, Effa smirked as she causally dodged each rock and grabbed the last one, ha ha ha, Effa laughed darkly, rocks. I am insulted that's the best you can do boys, be gone and let a woman have some fun with the boy under my foot here. Reshi smiled, 
I didn't just throw rocks, Effa was puzzled by his bold statement. Hiss. Hearing the sound she took a closer look at the rock, only for it to blow up in her hand, Effa screamed as the explosion ripped her flesh of her face and hand, Teneri was also hit by the blast but was only knocked out compared to the monster that was holding on to him, Effa throw him at the side of the arch where he lied there like a unwanted doll, Reshi was happy that he got her as she fell to the ground, smoke covering her features. Onoki looked at Reshi, dude, where did you get an explosive tag? Reshi looked at Onoki, I found it in one of the training rooms that was unused at the time, it was worth the trouble of making my own if this situation is any indication of what we will have to go though if we're going to become ninja of our village. That's if you survive. Both boys looked at their downed foe that was getting up. Her face was now scared and burned giving her more of a villainous look, she formed a bow out of the shadows around her. As she pulled back on the shadowy string an eerie green arrow formed, when the bow was at its peak she released the arrow, it flew true and struck Reshi in the chest, Reshi screamed as the light entered his body, it was more pain than anything that he had ever felt. Onoki raced to his side, Reshi we got to run, we cannot stay and fight her, Reshi stay with me, Reshi. End flashback. Reshi shook his head, Onoki and the rest of his friends carried him away after he had been knocked out by the pain. Mew came and helped the group to escape from Effa's arrows Onoki told him, but even Mew was unable to save Teneri's body from the monster, when they had had Reshi entered into the hospital he was on the border of life and death, the strange arrow that he was struck with took away his chakra until he had barely the level need to live, if it wasn't for the chakra pills the doctor told him he would have died from chakra lost. He sighed as he listened to his daughter talk about something he had missed out on while he was remembering the past, oh well, he though. Percy and Sally Jackson were driving down a country road to visit a good friend of Sally's, Sally tapped on the driver's steering wheel while Percy pressed his face on the window to see the land fly by, it was dusk and the sun's light covered the land and filled the sky with oranges, reds, and purple colors, Sally looked back to her son via the overhead mirror with a smile, Percy's dark wavy hair and manners reminded her so much of Poseidon that it hurt. Mom, are we there yet? Percy asked when he turned around, I am hungry. No, we aren't there yet Percy, she said, however if you're hungry the map says that there's a dinner a few minutes away, just be patient a bit longer please. Okay mom, Percy went back to looking out the window, Sally smiled at her son, I wish that his father could see him she thought, he is growing up to be a great child. So why are you two doing here? Asked the girl as she sat with her feet swaying back and forth, she tucked a stray blonde hair behind her left ear, her voice was calm but powerful, much like the weather is before a storm, last I checked, your two were my preset to little Rhea now. She isn't little anymore and I thought that she would have forgotten about me. The two lions shifted and the girl smirked, so she has forgot about me, then again she hasn't seen me since before the beginning of this so-called golden age, but why wound she send you two here? Answer me please, I would like to get back to my art, she grinned at the lion's hands they sweat dropped anime style, behind the girl was indeed a piece of art that was unfinished, if one could call it that, it was a foul smelling and sickly looking stew that was boiling in a pot over a fire, like a typical very bad anime cook. The two lions started to growl and roar, trying to tell the message that their master sent them to tell, the girl hung her head, morons she thought as she shocked her head, the two clearly were still trying to pretend to be simple plain old blessed lions that were under the titan Rhea, and they seemed to be enjoying the fact. I will give you two three seconds before I make it sure that you two will be the world's first poodle lions if you do not change back to normal. She stated in a strong regal tone of voice, the two lions looked at each other and shrugged their shoulders. In a flash, two people stood where the lions were, one stood at six foot four with long curly blue hair with soft sapphire eyes that tinkled with an inner joy. Her lips were curled into a soft smile as she ran her fingers though her hair that flowed around the fingers like water the other stood at two feet eleven and had a child's innocent feeling to him, his hair fell over his eyes even thought he kept trying to tame his wild brown hair, both were dressed in a simple gender neural dress, the two looked at the teenage looking girl and at each other. Well, it's been several thousand years since we've been together, spoke the tallest of the trio, the other two nodded in agreement, so sis, the reason why we are here is because Rhea sent us out to find the only ones that can save a mortal boy. Oh, so tell me did you find any? The teenage-looking girl asked with hint of mirth in her eyes and voice. The shortest of the trio held up three fingers, there was quiet with the waterfall pounding in the background before the sound of laughter filled the space of with the teenage-looking girl lived, the short one watched as the other two rolled on the floor in hysterics, to be fair, he thought shyly, Miss Rhea did not and must never know that two of the ones she seeks are right under her nose. After a minute the two gave each other a hug, it's good to see you Kira, the teen-looking girl spoke. Kira. 
the tallest girl in the room, gave a soft sign, it has Dylan, how's the antidote going for the toxin that our foes use? Almost done, it needs to be tested out first for any side effects but I am sure that it can reverse the effects of the toxic if digested within several hours, Dylan said with pride, that toxin was an interesting one at that, did you know that if one of our kind were to be hit by that stuff we would be weakened greatly, if one of those so-called immortals was hit they would slowly turn darker and darker if they allowed it to spread though their bodies. How about mortals? Hira asked with a feeling of uneasiness, the quiet third member of the group nodded to the question. Mortals huh? Hum. Dylan raised her left hand to her chin while having her right hand's finger drum the side of her leg, it depends really, as in because the immortals are mainly spiritual beings of raw power. Also we simply are not limited to one place and time unlike the two, mortals that have strong will confide of the toxin for a few hours but in the end all mortals, without outside help start to fall into the darkness of their own beings, why do you ask? Because the one that Rhea wants healed is fighting that toxin even as we speak, as soon as the words had left Kira's mouth, Dylan sprang into action, she quickly raced to the pot, she quickly started to check the temp of whatever that was cooking. Shit. I was hoping to do a control test but it seems that the enemy has forced my hand, she swore as she lifted the pot up with one hand, she then started to pour the stuff that was in the pot into a small beaker, the quietest of the trio and Kira watched as the liquid was poured into the last drop, as it left the pot it changed from a disgusting glop into a silver light color that glowed within red light. I thought that the stuff was almost done, Kira whispered to the unnamed person, the person shrugged and started to whistle like a bird while having the hands to make a bunch of slashes and swipes to answer her. Kira rolled her eyes at the answer she was given. Yes I do realize that she could have meant anything from a minute to a week. An harsh slash and a wobble like a song bird came from the mouth of the unnamed person, the person pointed at Dylan and clicked his tongue twice, then made a hissing sound followed by a stomp, Kira rolled her eyes. I see that she is racing around grasping things, she has to come with us and her reaction to what I said must mean that Naruto is in more trouble than we thought. Yes he is, Kira almost jumped at the sound of Dylan's voice behind her. Kira turned around to see Dylan standing behind her with a smirk on her face. An immortal or one of out kind can fight of the toxin giving time and energy, for a mortal it is a death sentence due to its affect, Kira and you two brat the quiet one seemed to crack a grin from the otherwise blank face, should remember that mortals aren't mostly spiritual beings, they are flesh and blood, that means that Naruto's soul is damaged and mortals cannot heal their souls fast enough to repair the damage the toxin causes. What sort of damage? The sort that turns men into monsters, Dylan took one last look around to see if she had everything, before we leave I should bring my apprentice along so that he can learn some more about healing, in order to do so you two need to go back into lion form. A wobble and a tongue click showed that the quiet one was okay, Kira just nodded, in a flash both were lions again, the two followed Dylan outside to the other side of the falls, Dylan raised her hands and gave a series of claps, as soon as the last one rang forth the sound of hooves came, the two lions Kira and the quiet person looked at each other. Ah, GT out of the way. All three of them dodged as a blur raced by them. Only to crash into the side of the rock wall, a white equestrian coat was the lower body with the four legs spread out. Where the head of a horse should be there was the torso of a young boy with brown eyes that were glazed over from the force of the crash, the upper body was folded back on the horse part showing the crater on the wall where he had hit, it was an young centaur and the two that did not know who it was just stared at the sight, Dylan just sighed, when will he learn not to go so fast on a slick surface? She thought as she shook her head. That's Chiron, my apprentice in the art of swordplay, in case you are wondering his age he is around 9 years old, Dylan said as she looked at his prone form, perhaps I should have you two help out by saying I found you two and seeing that you were hungry plus how he is clearly unable to stop on a dime. I think tricking him into thinking that you are going to eat him would be good motivation to pay more attention, also I already warned him I would so it would be funny. The lions looked at each other and shrugged their shoulders I am done repeating their names Dylan grinned and cleared her throat. The centaur awoke after he heard Dylan clear her throat, Chiron reporting for whatever you need Lady Dylan, he spoke in a rush, he then stuck a pose with his right thumb up with his arm extended while his left hand was at his left hip, he stood just under four feet and had a training sword tied to his back sheathed, his eyes seemed to sparkle as the mist of the waterfall covered the air behind him, the two lions stared and thought who the heck is this guy, is he okay? Chiron looked at the two lions and his face turned pale, I am sorry my lady don't let them eat me. He screeched as he tried to as much room as possible from the lions as he could in the narrow area that the pathway allowed, on the outside Dylan's face was one of a perfect poker face reliving nothing, on the inside she was enjoying watching Chiron sweat bullets as one of her siblings had some saliva start to drip from her lips Kira. 
Chiron I thought I said that you are to know when and where you should start slowing down. Now, little Rhea has summoned me and I want you to come to watch and assist me, is that crumbs from one of my cookies on your face? No, Chiron squeaked out. Dylan narrowed her eyes. Fine then, I hope that you are on your best behavior for as recall Rhea is still neural towards you, I think that she has yet to forgive your father's affair with Valera, it would be best not to remind her of that information, yes. Yes, good boy. Now we must get to Rhea's location in the next hour or else the person that she asks me to save is lost. You two Dylan pointed to the lions, find and bring Calypso, I will need her help and tell her to bring some moonflower nectar so I can contain the toxin, Chiron watched as the two lions nod and disappear, he gulped as Dylan turned her gaze to him, Chiron shivered as she grinned, now Chiron she started, Chiron backed away, he did not want what was about to befall him, Dylan's look said otherwise, he shivered as her shadow fell over him. Mercy. Konoha. Tsunade looked at the various ninja that stood at attention before her. Earlier tonight an unknown party broke into Naruto's apartment, Hinata was taken to the hospital after when she had discovered the party of foreigners, Enko and Yugao here invested Naruto's apartment already, the enemy force is around 12 strong, all armed with bows and arrows plus hunting knives, it is unknown what kind of jutsu they use, if there are more of them, and how they escaped, it is known however that they are connected somehow to Naruto's disappearance. A dark-haired young man lit a cigarette and took a breath in, this was Shikamaru one of the Rook Nine and the smartest person in the room, if he wasn't so lazy, troublesome, there are too many unknowns for any safe plays and ouch. He rubbed the spot where his soon-to-be wedded hit him with her war fan. Teneri looked at him and raised a brow, you going to cry again, baby. She spoke in a teasing tone and manner like one to a child or puppy, Shikamaru shook his head, good boy. You are so whipped Shikamaru teased Kiba as he scratched his ninja dog's head behind the ears, Akamara's tail started to wag as Kiba's fingers hit the sweet spot on his head, Kiba looked at the Hokage and cracked a smile, don't worry Tsunade, I bet I can find Naruto before sunrise. This not a time to be a braggart Kiba, said a young man in an overcoat. Shino, the village is protected by a detection barrier that extends around the village and beyond the walls for 75 meters. Also after the attack that Payne did the barrier was upgraded so that anyone that was trying to break in would be knocked out for the Anbu to pick up, this means whoever took Naruto was able to be undetected for over several hours without anyone noticing plus being able to leave without a trace, this means the either our security was compromised by a traitor or the unknowns were in the village for several years without anyone noticing. Like someone like Kabuto, he was spy that was unnoticed for over several years, suggested a pink-haired woman, Sakura. Kakashi shook his head. I don't think so, Kabuto was a citizen of the leaf that, as we were told by Orochimaru, suffered from an identification crisis of who he was after spend so many years as a spy for Konoha. That's why spies are sent into the field for only a few years at a time to prevent what happened to Kabuto, Tsunade took a breathe in, I do not believe that there is a traitor, however, I am having several Anbu squads on alert and having those that have reason to have Naruto kidnapped, killed, or mind wiped brought in, that is if. Ino frowned, if what? The rest of the rookie nine, Kakashi, Anko, Yugao, Hana, the hidden Anbu, and Shizune paid close attention as a looking of something fled across Tsunade's face, Tsunade made several hand signs and the group of ninja nodded, Tsunade got up out of her chair and walked over to the mantle where the portraits of the past Hokages were. What I am about to show you all is a class SSS secret that must never to told to Naruto or anyone outside of this room, I never knew of this information about Naruto until I became the cage, Hiruzen Serutobi made sure that only a Hokage could get this information and it was only after going though several of his notes did I learn of the location of the most guarded secrets of the village, and Naruto. Tsunade quickly put on her robe and hat, she then turned the portrait of her grandfather to the right 39 degrees. Then Hiruzen's she pushed back an inch so that it was at a tilt. Finally she pushed down on both the second and fourth Hokage's portrait, as she pushed down a low rumbling was heard, the group of ninja watched as a series of seals spread like wildfire across the room, the four Anbu guards leapt from their hidden alcoves to stand by the group, everyone in the room watched as the seals raced across every surface, Kakashi and the rest of the former and active Anbu were stunned at the massive seal complex. Tsunade paid no mind to this, she was more focused at the task at hand, as soon as the portraits were all the way into the mantle she quickly grabbed the third's pick and brought it down so that the portrait was face down, sighing she walked over to the front of her desk, she bit her thumb and traced the symbol of fire, as soon as she was done a scroll popped out, grabbing it she turned to the ninja in her office, read this. It was Sakura that took the scroll from Lady Tsunade, she opened it and her eyes went wide, is this. Yes, what is it Sakura, inquired Kakashi, 
Sakura handed the scroll over so that he could read, visibly shaken to the core, his eyes went wide and one could feel his shock as his hands started to tremble. That is impossible. I am afraid that the scroll is telling the truth. Naruto as of the attack that happened when he was four, has been wearing a seal that has been limiting all of his skill and why, if he was to learn of this Naruto would, no matter how much time has passed or his bonds, attack and destroy Konoha and all the inhabitants of the land of fire, his cousin is another matter as she isn't in the village expect for the rarest of times, if she was to learn we could have her assassinated, but if Naruto were to die. Those that have read the scroll nodded, as the rest read the scroll they also agreed that Naruto was to never learn of the contents inside the scroll, and it was information that used in the wrong hands could destroy the nations and Naruto's family history, but now the question was why did the third or Tsunade burn the scroll? However before anyone could ask alarms went off all around the village. The past. Zoe was trying to calm Naruto's body while Rhea was trying to wrap up his midsection. Red energy was leaking from a symbol on his stomach, at another time one could call it a work of art, now it glowed green with a jagged line going though it, the red energy was leaking from that cut into Rhea's and Zoe's eyes, it seemed to be trying to heal the wound, however the wound was lined with a blackish green glow that was eating up the red energy, that and the green was spreading over Naruto's body in a distinct pattern. Rhea and Zoe did not know it, but the green was tracing Naruto's chakra pathways, it was slow going but at the rate it was going, Naruto had an hour and some odd minutes to live, the green was eating at the network like it was oil feeding a fire, and it burned at Naruto's flesh, Rhea had summoned a bed of ice for Naruto to lie on, but it had melted in minutes from the heat. Zoe swiped some sweat off her brow, Lady Rhea you must leave, if you do not hurry to creep my uncle, your husband, Kronos will grow interested in your whereabouts even more than he is, if your child is born here. I know. Rhea snapped at Zoe. Zoe became silent as the enraged Titanus hovered over her. The only reason Rhea did not do any more than snap at Zoe was because she was more worried about her choices. Naruto reminded her so much of her other children, he had the warm feeling like Hestia and a feeling like nature similar to Demeter, a sense of honor that reminded her of Hades, plus the feeling of restlessness similar to Poseidon, he did not have anything similar to Hera, other than a powerful battle prowess that Hera had shown when Kronos tried to eat her, Kronos still had several chipped teeth. But Naruto wasn't her child, in fact in the time Rhea had met him to now, she could see that Naruto was just a mother's longing for her children, I am sorry Zoe, I just am tired from all that has happened to me over the past several decades. That is all right, milady. Rhea looked at Zoe with a blank face before turning away, Zoe watched how Rhea tried to maintain a look of calmness, but then after a few seconds Rhea broke down and started to cry, tears fell down her face and Rhea didn't care, for so long she had been afraid of her life and of her unborn child, where Kronos had stuck her with his weapon to make her stay for each of her other children so that he could have her watch him eat them. She felt only the memory, the real pain was because she could have done something, anything to protect her children, yet he could not, she was the titan of motherhood yet unlike many mortal creatures mother she did not fight with all her might to save her children. Now there was a person that was willing to help her get her children back and he lied there on the ground dying, Rhea's form shook with each tremor from her pain and terror, Zoe, seeing that Rhea was in pain, walked over and wrapped her arms around the titaness, Rhea leaned into her niece's arms and body and both just sat there for some time before. Hello. Blood dripped down the side of a figure's face. His foe grinned as he twirled his weapon in his hands. The figure's hands reset his grip around his weapon as he got ready for another clash. At an unknown signal the two raced at each other again, the foe thrust his spear towards the figure's face, but they used his sword to batter it away, he then used the movement to kick at his foe's side, causing his foe to stumble back, however he was able to use the bottom of his spear to send dirt flying into the figure's eyes, blinded he showed his side to his foe, who capitalized on the momentary weakness. The figure cried out in a wordless scream that sent shock waves out over the battlefield. The top of the mountain, weakness from the power of the two's blows, started to crumble down onto the village below, the two fighters did not care as they knew that the mortals below them would die even if the figure tried to stop the rock slide from. Alarms sounded from the village, letting the innocents that were in the danger zone look and start to run away, the figure, seeing that too many innocents were in the way, giving his foe the advantage, cursed. He looked up at the form of his foe falling down towards him, his weapon had changed into a sword and the point was heading straight for his head, placing his hands behind his dead he flipped over his head to a headstand. Avoiding being killed, but not from a bad haircut, he then span like a top with his legs spread out hitting his opponent several times before his foe jumped away from the attack, the figure, seeing his chance as his foe had let go of his weapon, tackled him over the edge of the mountain. Sage style. Futon release. Exploding air bullets. 
The figure narrowed his eyes as he weaved and twisted around the attack while running towards his foe in a matrix-worthy manner. Several massive explosions came from behind him as the jutsu hit the landscape. He then dove head first over the side of the cliff where the faces of the past Hokages were. Holding his sword out in front he began to rotate while fire form around him. In seconds a fire tornado was heading straight for his foe with a white-hot sword spinning like a drill aimed at his heart. His foe growled as the fire got ever closer, seeing that he that he was surrounded by rock he grinned as the figure had no idea what was about to happen. Sage style. Gravity, high and release. Dark mirrors reverse of reality, several ice mirrors formed under several of the falling rocks with a sickly shadow that was in the center, the shadow reached out around the rocks like a Venus fly trap and broke them apart while dragging the rocks into the mirror, the massive mirror formed in between the fighters, all the rocks that were taken in were shot at the tornado covered in a oily darkness at a rapid pace like a machine gun. Come on Jordan, I know that you are not using your full power. With the power of the Sage of Six Paths and the the tailed beasts that I taken from Naruto you are too weak to fight me. Also, I have taken the key, the two attacks hit in a cloud of dust, ice crystals, and soot spread out, the foe landed on the roof of the Hokage's office, several ninja were running around trying to understand what was going on, grinning evilly at the idea that formed in his head, the man will the cloak that was hiding both himself and Jordan to fall, as he did, Jordan landed near, his face scared from the rocks, however the wounds, like all the rest were healing at an accelerated pace. But there was one wound that was clear that would decide the fight, in his left hand was his weapon, as for the right, that hand was hanging limply, several of the rocks that were shot at him had hit their mark, embedding themselves in the arm at multiple places, both fighters ready ed themselves for the final clash between themselves then. Rhea hummed as she rubbed Naruto's jumpsuit against her cheek. Smelling his sweat embedded in the fabric, she giggled as she took in his scent. Oh Naruto, she thought as she opened her eyes, Rhea was on her bed in her chambers. Her secrete private chamber that not even her children, her half-sister, and their children knew about, the only other person that knew was Zoe Nightshade, but she rarely came over just by herself, all around Rhea were pictures of Naruto that Rhea had painted herself or Zoe, many of the pictures were of their time together before the time of the gods, but there were several that were more of a fantasy than reality. Rhea gasped as she pushed a finger into her pussy in and out. She imagined that it was Naruto on top of her and moaned as she thought of him touching her. Letting go of the jumpsuit she used her now free hand to play with her breasts, Naruto, she thought with a bit of lust and love, Naruto, Rhea gasped as she added another finger and started to finger herself faster, after a minute she stopped, taking a breath she brought her fingers to her mouth to lick them, after licking them she grabbed the jumpsuit and used her power to clean it and hang it on the wall. What to do today, she murmured to herself as she rose, she teleported to her bedroom and headed to the bathroom to take a quick shower. As the lukewarm water fell on her body one of her hands reached up and played with a little model kunai that hanged from a cord around her neck, it had been years and still she could still remember Naruto sacrificing his life for her children, tears dripped from her eyes as the memory played in her mind over and over. It was Kronos that dealed the final blow to her greatest friend, using his power over time to send him somewhere, or whether when he had sent him, his face, already bloody from fighting several titans at once, allowing time for the young Olympians to retreat and recover from a brutal attack stared at Rhea every time she got up, his deep light blue eyes staring into her own, filled with the knowledge that he was going to die, yet at peace with it. When he died and the news got to her children, all six of them changed, that was when the war changed as the Olympians were filled with anger and pain, in all her immortal life Rhea still remembered with pride as her children found their spark and courage to fight their titan's relatives, Rhea rubbed her head as she washed out the soap, as the bubbles went down the drain she thought about having Zoe come over this week so that they could celebrate together in memory of Naruto. She turned off the water and wrapped a towel around her female body, her half-sister Aphrodite may be the one that is the fairest on Olympics, but it was Rhea that had the real power over that domain, then again, her own flesh and blood had her and the rest of the titans banned from Olympus, however it was Zeus' first wife who was able to stay, Rhea still recalled Métis' promise that she would find a way for the titans to come and go to the mountain without fear from the then young king. Rhea looked into the mirror and started to brush her hair and dry it, Matey my dear, why did my son follow his father and his father before him? Rhea asked herself, getting no answer, not that Rhea was expecting one anyway, she finished getting ready for the day, she had a tea pool party later at Elven for all the female goddess and titans, Artemis hunters were also coming, acting as guards, the last time the group didn't put up a watch someone filmed them all and live, the ones that were in it to watch the scantily clothed females were hunted down and giving the worst beat down in immortal history. There was only a few immortal males that did know about the party but were spared from the female wrath. 
that was because they were smart, Hades, Hephaestus, and Poseidon, were in a bar fight, Ares and Dionysus. Trying to stop the fight, Zeus, the rest were under the banner of Apollo and Hermes, who were betrayed by the rest of the male immortals for only a light beat down, that was in the year 1785 to boot as the duo never tried before, it was fun watching the two scream for mercy as they were beaten to a bloody stain on the ground, it took them each several years to fully heal and two decades for them to work up the courage to have sex with a woman again, but knowing those two, they would try again someday if they wanted to, just not for a very long time. Rhea walked over to her walk-in closet and opened the doors, entering she looked at her swimsuits and party dresses, after a few minutes she came out in a red summer dress and three-inch heels, going to her desk she applied a light amount of makeup and styled her hair into a simple braid that fell down her back, she tucked a stray black hair to the side of her face, nodding at the look that she had chosen she quickly centralized the necklace so that the kanai was in between her breasts. Hera looked at Ares and Hephaestus with a careful eye. Knowing that today was the day of the party Hera want to make sure that none of the male gods used any sort of taping, listening, or camera spy gear that the two had, even thought Athena and her Roman sister were goddess of war, it was good to make sure that Ares wound not peak, Mars at least had the honor not to peak unless he was very bored, Hephaestus was a gentleman who would rarely, if ever, peek at a bunch of very hot and beautiful women, I need to use and centralized EMP. Why? Hera rolled her eyes to Ares' question, she knew that he knew what she meant but at times it seemed that he loved to play stupid, as the god of war Ares had full knowledge of warfare and some tactics, just not as well versed as Athena, he just preferred finding new ways to kill or hurt people in war instead of the finer tactics, however he was hot-headed compared to his cool-headed sisters whom both fought battles with an open mind instead of brute strength. Because today is the day Rhea is having her female-only party and wants to make sure that no one peeks or records any of the ladies and girls there. I know that Hep here turn off his security cameras in that area to his main viewer and memory banks to his computer, several of Artemis hunters are going to be using the secondary control room to monitor the area where the party is, the EMP is to make sure that any electronic recording device is taken offline. You do know that I need to cover up the wire's security and everything you ladies would be using so that it doesn't short out, Hephaestus with an uninterested yawn, and that would take several hours that are not there, plus, Athena and I, kinda, sorta, dismantled the EMP. What? We were working on a project and we needed the parts, I was going to make another but as you see my workshop is destroyed, it was true, after Athena and Hephaestus got out of the workshop the entire area collapsed, right now the two brothers and their mother were standing in front of the rubble. Fine, just you two make sure that Apollo and Hermes do not get into your spy gear, okay? Sure k. Okay. Appen hearing their answers Hera teleported back to her temple to get ready, as soon as she was gone the duo's form shimmered. Where Ares and Hephaestus stood or sat was the two troublemakers of Oimplus, aka, Hermes and Apollo. I had no idea that you could act like Ares like that, if you went any more nice Hera would have been tipped off by our act and we will not be able to see the greatest of wonders to both immortals and mortals' lives. Oh shut up. Zoe hummed as she washed her tunic in the river with the rest of the group. Artemis had brought them here so that everyone was clean for the party later. Several of the younger hunters were playing in the water downstream while one of the senior hunter watched, on the outside she gave off the feeling of an eldest sibling enjoying herself, to her right was one of her eldest friends, Lily, Lily was a river nymph that had joined the hunt during the time when the Persians were invading for the first time, she was using her ability over water to clean hers and the younger hunter's tunics. Zoe can you come with me? Zoe turned to see Artemis standing behind her in her her adult form. Artemis was just wearing a cloth bra and underwear as she was also washing her clothes, Artemis' cleavage was covered with sweat as the hot sun was beating down on the group, her nipples were showing thought the fabric due to the combo of sweat, water, and heat, Apollo was not in his chariot again, most likely chasing a mortal woman again Zoe mused as she got up. Zoe followed the goddess to an area a distance away from the group, as Zoe followed Artemis she thought back to the mission that sent them to Naruto's universe, it was only 17 years prior that Rhea and herself got the news on his whereabouts, Rhea then had to call in a few favors and convince Artemis to go collect the mail, it was only a month age where those going were able to cross over to that realm. Zoe recalled that the world was nice, with all those trees in the land of fire, and the things that lived in the woods were things she had never seen, they had landed in a river from a 30 foot drop so the start wasn't fun, but the rest of the trip made it up all of the group's skill was needed, as trying to sneak into a village where 90% of the inhabitants were trained in arts of stealth and the art forms of lying. The feeling of the place put Artemis and the rest of the hunters on edge, it was like in Spartan or Rome, but with all the soldiers as demigods, but with all those guards it was easy to sneak in with a bit of the mist and luck, 
for some reason the mist was not as effective on these mortals as the ones that live nowadays, those two, Azumo Kamazuki and Katetsu Hagen, were some of the easier to get past they were falling asleep so the mist worked faster and easier to be fair. So Zoe, started Artemis, shaking Zoe from her thoughts, why is it that you and Rhea have to this Naruto person? My lady, Zoe replied questionably. Artemis sat down on a fallen tree and gave a signal so that Zoe knew it was okay to speak to her freely. Artemis knew that Zoe was so uptight at times, but right now was not time if she wanted Zoe to talk, if it was because of the failing of finding the target or something else, it was best if Zoe opened up so that she could help her. I mean why is it after so many years of boy hating you were the first to go find a boy? Even if as a favor to Rhea you would have been one to stay behind unless I asked for you personally, then there's the fact you grabbed a jumpsuit of his, while it sated Rhea's anger from the failing of not finding him and is not sticking around to find him. My lady what is the point that thee wish to make? Point is Zoe I want to know if you have feelings for this boy and in what way. Artemis looked at Zoe with a mixture of concern and of friendship, over the years she had formed an almost mother-daughter relationship with Zoe, as she was the eldest in the hunter, over the course of the years many of the first hunters either killed, left the hunt due to injures too grave to heal and asked to die, or fell to that stupid love smitten goddess and her son powers, the last was rare, thank the fates, as the duo usually did it when angered and took a long time to plan out. Then again there were a few hunters that changed over to become attendants of Vesta. Hestia's Roman form, Artemis did not mind that as much as those hunters were the ones that lost things that were important to the hunt but were still able to tend to the hearth. Her Roman form also did not mind this as the arrangement between the goddess allowed the crippled hunters to keep their immortality while staying virgins. Venus, Aphrodite's Roman form, did not like it but she was smart to know not to tempt maidens under Vesta's care. My relationship with the boy is one of friendship and comradeship my lady. I knew him before the brat of Zeus tricked me and broke my heart and trust of most males, Naruto was and still is, I hope, a good person, yes he had his moments but overall he's someone that I trust with my life, Zoe took a deep breath, Artemis was going to go haywire when she heard the next part. Should I tell her or should I wait? Then again she may ask so how did you two meet anyway? Darn it, are the fates against me today for some reason or is it because Lady Nemesis want to balance the scale or something, Art why me? Why now? Well I better answer before Artemis goes stir crazy. Zoe opened her mouth and knew that Artemis was not going to be seeing Naruto in a good light in a few seconds, we first met near the time of Zeus' birth, I was shadowing Lady Rhea and Naruto was her bodyguard traveling partner, he thought I was an enemy and attacked me, then he, Zoe spoke quickly and so softly so that Artemis didn't hear. What was that Zoe? What did Naruto do? Inquired the goddess. Zoe's face was turning bite red and she was doing the thing with her fingers when she was trying to hide something, after being with Apollo and Hermes for so long Artemis was a very strong in knowing if someone was hiding something. He used an attack to disable me, the thing is, the attack robbed me of all my robe and underwear. He what? Artemis yelled out. Zoe gulped as the air filled with the goddess anger, Artemis was very protective of maidens and her hunters, her brother was also someone that she held dear even thought he drove her crazy at times with her flirting with hunters, Zoe realized that if she did not explain Artemis could, no, would maim or hunt the boy. My lady, let me finish, Artemis rage cooled and Zoe relaxed, he stopped attacking me and kept his eyes off my form, he offered to fix my robe, which he did, all without looking at my body, however before that he was knocked out from seeing my bare chest via and bloody nose, and I got to stomp on his balls several times for good measure as well, I also tried to cut off his balls with my old sword, but Rhea put a stop to that. Yet you two are friends. Yes my lady, we agreed to start over from the beginning and after spending time with him I can say he is a good person, then there was the, never mind it is not for me to tell, for any more could you please ask Rhea, Artemis nodded and Zoe went to telling her goddess about Naruto, how he was an idiot at times, yet in battle his personality changed to one of a warrior of the highest caliber. Come on, we need to get ready for the party, Artemis smiled at her lieutenant as they rose, we wouldn't want to be late, also thanks for telling me about Naruto, I still am unsure about him but I will not turn him into an animal or shoot him when I first meet him, if I do anyway. Of course and thanks, my lady. A lone figure sat in the shadows in a dark room working at a desk. On the right side was the dangerous of foes known to mortals and immortals, like a hydra every time on cuts into it more comes back and worse if you burn it it only means that you need to more of the blasted thing, yes this enemy is the foe called paperwork, defeater of penmanship, killer of fun and play, the bane of those who are in position of power, and no matter what one does, there is always more of the cursed stuff. 
On the left was a few photo frames, a half-eaten sandwich, and a mini-computer, scattered on the desk were several logistics, the kind one would find in the military that dealt with everything from mortal to food to weapons, also there was a few reports from different battlefields and other things, the person that was reading these reports and filling out the paperwork was trying to nap, as he had been at work at the desk for several hours. These reports are painful to read and do, why did I'd leave or quit again? Oh right, several stacks of papers in the warehouse that needed to be filed fell on her, I should go visit her in the medical housing to check up on her, she was after all buried in the avalanche of paperwork for several hours as we tried to dig her out, nah, I should send her a card, wait she is now afraid of anything related to paperwork, the person hummed to himself as he looked at the stack of papers. I wonder if the new recruits have finished their first unsupervised mission, I did send them to Konoha to look up my grandson after all, and send him to the past to protect the Titanus Rhea, why was that again? I forgot, oh that right, the big man asked for that due to some idea he got, I trust the boss without question, but I still think that maybe he was drunk at the time or was bored again, the last time he was bored he made the platypus, I still do not understand that animal even after all this time. The man took a look at one of the photos, it showed a young man with blonde hair with a pregnant red-haired woman. He sighed as he took the photo frame in his hands, if one looked closely, the picture was similar to the one taken of Minato Namikaze and Kashina Uzumaki as proud parents with Naruto in Kashina's pregnant belly, however, unlike that picture that was shown to Naruto, this one had someone else in the pose of a proud grandparent, there was a couple of tears as the man's eyes watered a bit. I wish I was faster to help when Toby attacked your home with Kurama, then again I was never really there for you when you needed a father, my dear child I promise that I will do my best to take care of Naruto in the shadows until he needs me the most, this I swore on my honor and my sword, and I have for the most of his life, I know you two had talked to him but still I wish to tell you of some of the things I seen him do, but I need to get back to work. The man returned back to his paperwork, he needed to finish before noon because he had to met up with one of the Greek gods. Athena still thought he was immortal, as he wished it to be. It made the meets more fun as she kept trying to see if he would be a good man for one of her brain children, however she couldn't do so because the figure kept escaping her sights, it was rather easy to tell that she was one of the immortals from the Greek Roman area, after all no matter how hard she tried to hide the fact she was a goddess from the Greek side, he was able to price the veil, it was one of the perks of his domain and his age. She and him were going to a tournament where people dressed as warriors from the past and fought each other. This year the warriors were to be Greek and she and him were going to be fighting in it, then again she was adamant about going, the man groaned as he thought about the looks that she was sending him, at least they weren't as bad as the looks Artemis sent him, Artemis just kept sending the look of an hungry wolf and he was the rare prime steak, at least they do not know as of yet that the other is after me as well, he thought as a headache started to form. The mon's thoughts were interrupted as a knock came from the door, commander, I have the report from the mission you gave out for the rookies plus several other mission reports. Come in then, a woman walked in in a purple combat dress, her combat boots heels clicked on the floor as she walked to the desk where the man sat, twin swords were on her back and a dagger on the inside of each boot heels, her hair shimmered as the light hit it, showing the blues and greens highlights of her dark hair that was in a bun, ah, General Alexandra, how is your day? The woman smiled, good sir, training for the new soldiers has started today. Class number 2465 AD and class number 649 HGF have been deployed to the places where the LTs can separate them into their platoons, anyway, the spies in the Norse realm say that as of right now there is a hidden threat that our spies were able to find, it seems someone is trying to start the Ragnarok, our forces have intercepted and destroyed those behind it without Odin's notice, there is no change in the majority of the religions around the globe, the universe and Muliverse. Give me the however. However the enemy had intercepted Naruto before Jordan and his partner could get there, but they were able to send him to the past, Artemis and her hunters did come and left after stirring up the hornet's nest, the duo are still there and should be withdrawn soon, oh and Hestia wants to know how the ones in hash v3 are doing. To the first accepted, have them return as soon as they get the order, as for Hestia's request I was going to check up on them right now, now I need to go and get ready for my not date with Athena, that girl still thinks that I am a perfect candidate for a husband I swear. Of course sir, comma comma comma, the man stood in front of a wall marked hash v3. He reached up and pressed the part of the wall where it was marked. A rumbling sound similar to a thunderstorm over a ocean was heard as the stores slide by each other to form a doorway. The man stepped though and into a room with 15 tubes in a crested moon, he frowned as he looked at them with rage, not it was in them, but why the figures were in them, inside were humans, demigods to be more correct, 
but not just any demigods. These were the children of the Big Three, both Roman and Greek, born before the gods got their great prophecy but younger than sixteen, all had different ages than each other. There was a son of Hades and twins of Pluto, boy and girl. The boy was fourteen and the twins were barely two. There was two pairs of Zeus kids, all girls the same age. 8. A son of Jupiter age 6. Then there was a daughter and son of Neptune, ages 14 and 12 in that order. Then there was the triples of Poseidon, all girls aged at 13, and his son age 1, the last one held the youngest of the group, but this one was under the most care, an unborn child lied in that one, the last child of the one called Maria D'Angelo, the last of the big three children to be connived before the oath. It was just pure luck that they were able to save the child before Maria was buried, the Furies were after all very protective of the body, Hades in his grief did not even know that she was carrying a child, it was little more than a group of cells but starting to show that it was becoming an embryo, this one was lucky that it wasn't dead, without a name and reason to die other than being unlucky. When the Greco-Roman immortals got their great professor, Hestia came to the man on her hands and knees, begging him to save the innocents to her brother's fear and lust of women, these were the only survivors of the purge that the king of the gods had, the other children of Maria D'Angelo were in the Locus Hotel so they were saved from Zeus, Jupiter's wrath and fear, the rest were killed. Commander. Jordan and his partner are under attack. Jordan is fighting him but at the rate it is going he's going to die. Orders sir. A male voice called out from the hallway. Send team number 45 to the area private Mithiles, I have a date to get to. Yes sir. Dylan looked at the form of the one called Naruto. If one knew that the person was Naruto, his skin had turned black and blood was dripping out of all his nose, mouth, ears, finger and toenails, under his eyes, and old wounds, a green glow was tracing his chakra system, now visible to the naked eye, Rhea, Zoe, Chiron, and Leto, she heard Dylan needed help from Chiron, he was clearly in pain and if not healed soon, dead. How long has he been like this? As in the bleeding and the darkening of skin, she asked as she got her things out. The bleed for two hours, as for the skin for the last ten minutes, Zoe replied, before she could go farther Naruto's eyes snapped open, where once there was orbs of a bright blue and white, there was only darkness of a pit with a glimmer of blood red where the iris would be for the right eye and half the left. Die you filthy female scum! Naruto roared in a two-tone voice. He filled the cavern as he lunged at the nearest person to him, namely Dylan, she calmly backhanded him and he flew into the rock wall in the back, he fell to the ground like a kicked dog or cat but rose to his feet in a flash, he hissed like an animal and claws formed at the ends of his fingers and toes, acid dripped from his mouth sizzling as it hit the ground, shadows swarmed around him giving his already animal-like look a more darker tone. Food prey kill. Naruto roared at the group, the immortals were unnerved at his feral actions, for Zoe and Chiron, the youngest of the group, it was if Naruto have reverted to a more animistic state of mind and body, every movement Naruto made screamed out predator and killer barely the same person that Zoe knew or what a civilized person should be. Hold him still, called out Dylan as she prepped the antidote, Zoe, Chiron, and Leto leapt forward to capture Naruto, Rhea and her lion stood by the opening to stop him from leaving, Naruto growled and lunged at Chiron, seeing him as the weakest member of the trio, it was due to Zoe's quick thinking to throw a rock at Naruto's head as he flew by, however she wasn't prepared for the shadows that were following Naruto to attack her, the shadows struck at her side and she was sent flying. Athena sighed as she brushed her hair in her temple, Hestia was nearby reading one of the oldest novels a mortal wrote, The Tale of Gilgamesh, both ladies were enjoying each other's company before the party later on, Athena looked at her reflection and hummed, her grey eyes narrowed at the sight of a stray hair that did not stay in place, growling, she attacked the spot with her hairbrush, trying to get her perfect hairstyle that she loved. A hand reached out and stopped her, Athena dear, stop trying to force it to go your way, Athena looked to the smiling face of her favorite aunt, Hestia saw the look on Athena's face, it was her look of pleading for help, yes, it'll help you with your hair, so you can impress your boyfriend. Athena's face turned bright red, Auntie Hestia. She cried out in embarrassment, Hestia gave a small giggle at Athena's mad, embarrassed face, the duo were quiet as Hestia brushed and then braided Athena's blonde hair. So what are you and your date going to be doing? Hestia inquired as she finished braiding her niece's hair. We're going to a reenactment slash tournament of Greek warriors of old, we are going to be in the singles tournament, Athena stated matter-of-factly, I hope that there is someone that will give me a challenge, most mortals, other than demigods at times, are so weak in the old ways of fighting. Perhaps your date will give you a fight that you crave. Perhaps, but there are few that can pressure greatly me in a spar, my old friend Pallas, Nike, Artemis, and that person, Athena growled out the last word in a hiss, Hestia rolled her eyes, knowing of who Athena meant, 
I still remember his sword to my throat and my symbol of power in his other hand also at my throat, when I see him again I will beat him into the ground. Hestia shook her head as Athena began going on a tangent, saying how she would make him beg to her or about making him wear a collar while she led him with a leash. A dark foreboding cloud hovered over Athena as she thought of all the things she would do to get back at the one that had defeated her on the battlefield, should I tell her. Hestia thought as Athena started to crackle insanely, maybe not. Comma comma comma. A shiver went up a mon's back as he waited in his car. I think someone is talking about me, he thought as he took a sip of his coffee, he took a look at his phone when it started to buzz. So what is the report on the condition of my nieces and nephews? He quickly texted back, they are all still in the green, however. Yes, it needs a mother or it will die. I understand, I will see what I can do, be careful today, I did not mean to, but she is in a foul mood right now. I kinda reminded her of her defeat by your hands, oh and she wants to collar you and have you lick her feet after she captures you if she finds you. The man smiled as he laughed, I understand Hess, text you later. K, she will be leaving in a few seconds. The man resat in his seat as he thought over what Hestia said, he brushed his blonde bangs back with one of his hands, his deep ocean or late night sky blue eyes looked at the Empire State Building or rather towards the top where Olympus was, it was so tempting to go up there and given the baby Zeusida a swift kick to the balls, but Master said not to. Sorry I am late Agent Smith, a grey-eyed woman said as she entered the car and sat down in the passenger side, she flashed him a smile, I was just finishing up some paperwork in the office, I hope I didn't keep you waiting. No I wasn't here for long, and please, call me Mr. Smith, Athena looked at Mr. Smith and gave him a teasing smile, hey no trying to get me to go easy on you Tia you know I do not hold back for anyone unless they ask. I do remember, Athena looked at John as he drove to the park where the event was. Her thoughts went over all the facts that she could find about him so that she could have an advantage over him in the tournament, she did it to everyone so she wasn't stalking Smith, all she got was that Smith was around 21 years of age, an ex-military operative with honorable discharge after a bomb wiped out his unit and destroyed his balls with chapel, twin parallel scars ran down his back as well as markings from being tortured by the bombers before rescued. But it was the lack of information that was driving Athena crazy, no data about where he was trained, where he lived, or even when the bombing happened, he had no social security card info or any sort of job, it was as if he had appeared out of nowhere. It was a mystery and Athena wanted to find out what made Smith tick, and she was going to use everything she knew to get it. The man shuddered. Comma comma comma. Athena glared at her opponent as they circled each other. Even thought that this event was for fun, it was insulting to her as a war goddess what her foe was wearing, it wasn't even worth being called armor, even Ares would be insulted because it was almost clothing than armor, behind her helmet she smirked as her foe flinched each time his eyes fell upon her shield even thought it was covered heavily by the mist, Aegis was still strong enough to cause fear to her foe. The ref dropped the flag, begin. The man raced forward her with a cry, Athena waited, ten ten feet, five, three, as soon as he was almost on her she twirled around, slamming her shield onto the side of his face, several teeth went flying and he fell like a sack of potatoes, as he started to rise she nailed him in the chest with a kick, he was out after that. Winner in ten seconds flat, Tia. Athena waved as she waked off the platform and took a seat in the competitor's box, as she went down John's name was called, she grabbed his arm as he passed her, don't lose cause I want to fight you, and I want to see how good you fight in that armor of yours, I still do not know how he got a complete set that fit him perfectly. Wasn't planning on losing Tia, Chan, he teased, knowing that it would get a reaction. He wasn't disappointed as she threw a punch at his face, he dodged it without a problem, laughing he walked onto the floor to face his opponent a six-foot-tall man with a build of a bodybuilder, John looked at several places where his foe's muscles were tense and relaxed, to a normal eye his foe seemed to be a type that used brute strength, but he knew better, the points of where he looked told him that his foe was a speed type with high defense and pain tolerance. Begin. R-A-H-H. Wax smack bam. Everyone's eyes popped out of their sockets and their mouths fell open so that a car could enter. WW winner by two seconds flat is Smith due to indecent exposing by Franklin. Comma comma comma. Athena and Smith circled each other probing for weakness and lack of attention, they were in the final battle bracket and Athena was grinning on the inside while maintaining a look of indifference towards Smith, blood dripped from a cut that Smith got in over her eye, her helmet was out of bounds when he had knocked it off when he gave her the cut, the mist was hiding the fact that it was golden in color as she was a goddess to the mortals but it was annoying. Her spear was broken by his sword and she had broken his over his head, 
it was worth hearing him yelp in pain as she then nailed him between the legs with her armored leg during the the first few blows, she blinked as the blood dripped into her eye, well her eyes opened she leapt back to avoid a slash from Smith's sword. Come on Miss Olympia I thought that you were going to go all out. Athena snarled. I just thought I give you a chance Smith. Ah, is the little pretty pretty princess doesn't want to break her nails. Smith teased as their swords locked, Athena gritted her teeth at his comment. I am not a pretty princess. She roared as she attacked him with fury, Smith ducked and weaved though her blows, only using his sword to parry the ones that got too close, his grin only angered the goddess even more when she saw it. But I bet you would look so cute in your pink dress and diamond tiara, Smith smiled even more as he saw that he was getting under Athena's skin, Athena was a prideful goddess and that was her mainly weaknesses, wisdom was useless when one was being ruled by their emotions and Athena was showing it, attacking her mentally where it hurt was an underhanded trick, but it was worth it, he was after all a warrior and a fighter forged in the fires of battle and war. She just had the domains of warfare and war, perhaps you should hang up your weapons and take on a more easier practice, like art or weaving. Athena froze and her hair covered her face, Smith knew that she was about to do that thing human females did when pissed off, knowing that he had seconds he threw his shield like a disc, not at Athena, but at the wall. What did you say? She said in a low voice, Smith eyed the path that his shield was going and knew that it would reach its target in a minute. You heard me, I guess that a daughter of a bank owner with a joy for lighting striking his enemies or those who tick him off is not a very good fighter, in fact, I am holding back, it wouldn't be proper if the knight in shining armor hurt the princess whom he was tasked to protect. Die. With murder in her eyes Athena attacked Smith with the desire to see him bleed, no one called her a pretty princess, Zeus didn't count as she was technically won by his first wife, and no one, no one, was going to say that she needed protecting, Smith used his sword to block her blows but Athena was forcing him back. Why is it that every time I fight her she's so easy to bait? Oh right, she is younger than me, maybe I could offer her free lessons, but her pride will make it hard for her to allow it, a shame, really, as her brother is rising, he may be weak, but then again, he is destined to kill Zeus and take over as king of the Greco-Roman mythos. Smith really disliked the fact that he had to help the Greeks and the Romans, but orders were orders, after all, the third time's the charm, and now I have to deal with an enraged woman that still has the temper of a teenager, troublesome, he did a flip over her head using her shoulders as a pivot, he then used his foot to toss up a part of his broken spear and used it to block her kick to his head. The people around them was roaring with enticement as the duo fought. Steel rang rang as well as sparks flying each time their weapons clashed, no longer was this a fight for fun and for geeks, no, this was now a fight that was worthy of its own action film, and both fighters were pulling out the stops, John slammed a fist into Athena's solar pelvis, she axed kicked him on the shoulder hearing his collarbone crack, John fell to the ground but used the momentum to scissor his legs and grab onto Athena's, knocking her over as well. Athena landed hard, and hissed when she felt a few of her teeth fall out, she rolled to the left to avoid a kick and then kicked John between the legs, gah. He yelled, going into a fetal position holding his balls, Athena quickly stood up and placed the tip of her sword on his Adam's apple. Looks like I win Smith, Smith smirked. Looks can be misleading Tia, Athena's mind raced as she tried to understand what the glitter in John's eyes meant. Athena pushed the tip of her weapon so that her foe could know that he had lost. There is no way bam. Stars filled Athena's vision as she tumbled forward, in that second she loosened her grip on her sword, after a moment Athena found herself on the floor pinned by her own shield press against her with her own sword blade against her throat, she could see what hit her head, a beam that had been cut fell from the catwalk like a pendulum and hit her with considerable amount of force, if it wasn't for the fact she was immortal she could have died. I win. Winner of the tournament is Mr. Smith. Comma comma comma. You are making me tense. You cheated. I should have won, not you. It's not my fault you let your hubris get in the way, I saw a weakness and I used it to my ability, no trick to it, in war or in battle one must do what is mortally right as well as try to end it as soon as possible for the sake of everyone else. Athena was now quiet as she thought up a response to what Smith said, she was runner-up in the tournament but was mad on how she had lost, the duo were heading to Athena's favorite place in Manhattan, an ice cream shop near a library on the riverside, for some reason Athena was uneasy and it wasn't because she was mad at Smith, no, it was like the calm before a battle. It was at a stop did it happen, two black SUVs with black tinted windows rolled up on either side of the vehicle the duo were in, Athena didn't think of it much as the ones her side seemed like a family on a vacation, the other one had SWAT team members in the front so she thought that they were heading to do a job or leaving from one, the female driving the family SUV gave Athena a wave while the kids that she could see ducked under the window. Tia, 
If you hear a gunshot take over, huh? B-A-M-B-A-M-B-A-M-B-A-M-B-A-M. -B -A -M -B -A, -M -B -A, -M -B -A, -M -B -A -M. Athena ducked as the SUVs opened fire with, her hand brushed against the dashboard as she grabbed the steering wheel. The past, A-N. Last time here until a later date. Naruto's dark eyes burned into the souls of those around him. His muscles tensed and he let out a low hiss, his teeth gleamed in the darkness and his eyes darted to each of the ones around him. To Zoe, Chiron, Leto, and Rhea, Naruto's actions reminded them of a wild animal that was trapped, in pain, and hungry. Chiron held his sword in both hands with the point pointed to the upper left of his body, Leto stood a bit behind him to the left with an arrow notched and ready to fly at any second, Zoe stood towards Chiron's left with her sword at her side for a fast draw, Rhea stood behind Leto with two short swords in either hand ready to join the fight in any moment. The area around them was destroyed, where once there was a cave was now a massive indent in the side of the mountain, pools of acid were everywhere from Naruto's attacks, Rhea's lions were bleeding from a series of blows to the head that Naruto gave them, Dylan stood next to the group with the antidote that would cure Naruto's condition, however in order for it to be effective it needed to be injected into his blood or swallowed. Which right now both weren't options. How's everyone one holding up? Leto asked as she kept her eyes on Naruto, everyone gave a quick grunt at her words. Where's Calypso? Asked Rhea. Calypso was nearby she knew, but only Dylan knew what she was up to. Dylan flipped her hair over her head out of the way of her face, she's growing the moonlace, see how the shadows are clinging to him. The pollen from the moonlace will dispel them, stunning him for a few seconds, that will be our chance to hold him down and give him the antidote. Naruto, in his state of mind, did not like the words that were about him, tensed. I think she should hurry up, I feel like a prime piece of meat and he's a starved predator, Chiron stated as he stood uneasily. Naruto are you there? Zoe asked softly. Naruto snapped his jaw and pawed the ground. Come on Naruto, we have your medicine and you need to let us help you. They group watched as Naruto seemed to be fighting himself over his actions, the shadows around his face peeled back with a slurping sound and his eyes returned to normal, Zoe. He spoke softly, in pain, and confliction, help me, please. I will, be you need to take some medicine, can you control yourself so that we can help you? She lies to you, she means to kill you to protect herself, look into her eyes, there's fear in them, just like the villagers that hurt us. Shut up. Naruto roared in his mind and out loud, his body froze up, giving time for Leto to get in close to knock him out. Well that was anticlimactic. Rhea deadpanned, I thought that we were about to have to fight against the clock, get our asses kicked, and at the last second save him. Dylan smiled, well we could wake him up, but I doubt that he would be willing to trust us after knocking him out, we'd better tie him up. Comma comma comma. Ugh. I feel like someone dosed me in lava and cooked me, Naruto groaned as he awoke, he grimaced as the light from the morning sun filled his vision, what happened? I removed the lingering poison that was turning you into little more than a monster, Naruto looked to his left and hiss's pain roared from his spine, a hand was placed on his lower back and the pain slowly disappeared, the aftereffects of almost become your own darkness is painful, especially for own with your blood. My blood. Naruto watched as a teenage-like female walked into his line of sight, what about my blood? The girl giggled in a way that seemed to make the light brighter, you have the blood of a powerful greatest warrior in your veins, not much, but enough to say that he was your grandfather or grandmother, also, one of your parents must have been immortal because I sense some of their power in you, now why is that? I do not know, I never knew my parents personally and there is no record of where my father came from other than he was an war orphan and my mother was said to be from the village of Whirlpools, and who are you? My name is Dylan, not that you will remember young one, now can you answer this question? What is it? Why do you have a seal on you? Not the one on your stomach, but under the bone that jets out to protect the spine where it meets the skull. Huh, I take it that you don't know. Interesting. Dylan started to mutter under her breathe, too low for Naruto's trained ears to hear, do you want me to remove it? Is that safe? I mean neither of us know why it is there. It is a limiting seal, it degrades everything the one it is placed onto, speed, strength, motor and fine motor control, memories, agility, the ability to retain and store information, you name it, it has been degraded, it seems that after the poison entered your body it started to break, letting you gain your full potential again, however it also shows that someone made sure that you also had loyalty to the extreme to the one that placed the seal and to whoever that person told you. Naruto thought about it, he spoke with a low voice do it, nodding Dylan went over to, to him. This will hurt, a lot, Naruto screamed as a burning sensation raced though his body, his body and mind felt like someone was ripping him apart and putting him together. Then the memories came back. Flashback 1. 
Naruto raced rooftop to rooftop fleeing from the angry genin that shouted mean things to him. His three-year-old mind did not understand the words coming from the boy's mouth. But the tone and the thing that was covering his chest and side of his head was glaring at him with pure hatred and want. He had told the old man that several of the ninja had things on them but the old man waved him away. Naruto even told Gigi that he had one growing on him but the old man threw him out of his office, then this big person started to chase him after Naruto said that he was a bad person, the thing on the boy told the genin to kill Naruto and he would gain power and influence from the village. Naruto ducked as the boy shot some fireballs at him. Naruto narrowed his eyes and jumped from the roof to the pile of poo that was being carted out of the village, the genin didn't see where Naruto hide and left, frustrated, Naruto watched him leave with sadness in his heart. Naruto did not understand but it hurt when someone that he saw so full of anger and hatred, closing his eyes Naruto waited before opening them, where once was a bright sunny day was a world of white, black, and grey. An like when in Lord of the Rings when they put on the ring. People did see, feel, hear, and smell him when he was in this hidden place in front of them. Naruto didn't want to know if anyone could taste him but they could sense him if he passed through them, this was how he escaped the Anbu and other ninja and mobs because they couldn't see him. Then a black shadow covered him, Naruto ducked under a table and waited for the shadow to pass, Naruto watched as several ninja passed by his hiding spot, they couldn't find him, but what was on their shoulders were another matter. They looked like evil cupids with a snake-like face. They sat on the shoulders of the ninja and just kept on whispering into the ninja's ear. They have seen Naruto here before but more or less left him alone, the ninja disappeared around a corner and Naruto raced away towards the place he used as home for the last week. Racing though the streets Naruto reached training ground 44, leaping over the gate with riding on it he raced inside, he then climbed a tree to the top and lay down on the top branch and fell asleep, but not before returning to the normal world. Hi there, are you doing? Naruto looked up to the sky to no one, I wish I could show you the view from here, the green goes on and on, for me I am trying to tell the Hokage that there is a something wrong with a lot of people, more and more they are gaining these dark things on them. Naruto waited for an reply. The light seemed to flicker around him and a gentle breeze brushed his skin like a pain brush, Naruto nodded like he got a reply. Okay, thanks for talking with me. Naruto was never one to dream about much, when he did it was about ramen, or the war, but right now it was different, he dreamt that he was in a cavern with several others fighting shadows, to his left there was a boy with a glowing bronze sword and with black hair, he was shouting something to a blonde hair girl who was on the ground, with a shadow about to stab her with a dagger. To his left was a boy with curly black hair with a sledgehammer, he was using fire to fight his enemy, but his foe was using fire as well, Naruto's dream body did a back flip to avoid being hit by a sword, when he was in the air he watched as a girl with a sliver glow around her shot sliver tipped arrows at her foe, but the shadow blocked using a shield. Naruto slashed with a sword and was blocked by his unknown foe, no matter how hard he tried, his dream self would not look at his foe, it was if there was something blocking him from seeing its face, Naruto jumped as a blast of lighting nearly roasted him, his dream self shouted something to a blonde hair guy, who was exchanging blows with his enemy, while shooting bolts of lighting. He heard a cry of pain and stole a glance towards the girl on the ground, now sporting a bleeding dangling arm, clearly useless, the shadow seemed to be smiling and enjoying her cries of suffering, the boy with the strange bronze sword seemed to be in anger and was trying to reach the girl, but his foe wouldn't allow him, a girl with a golden spear ran and slammed the butt of it on the enemy of the blonde making her fall. Her own foe, however, swept her of her feet, but she rolled and jabbed her spear in its direction, he wanted to see more but he was being pushed back by his foe, no matter what he tried, his foe countered, he was tired, and his muscles shook with every blow, he opponent, however, wasn't, Naruto overextended a thrust and his foe capitalized on it. He gasped as the blade slid though his ribs, it was then a flash of fire crossed over his and his foe's head did he see its face, the shadow spoke one word that sent chills down his spine, however before Naruto could a feminine voice echoed throughout the cavern area. Naruto. Hum. It's time to wake up Naruto. Five more minutes, Naruto turned over in his sleep, he felt so safe and warm and comfy, why should he wake up? More sleep, he thought as he fell into his dreams. It's been far too long Naruto. Either you wake up or I will make you. Don't, care, Naruto muttered, the voice sighed and Naruto heard the sound of someone walking away. Splash. Ah, Naruto screamed as he flew out of the bed he was in at speeds of at least March 1st, he landed on his feet shivering, the bucket of near frozen water landed on his head and he grunted from the shock. I did say get up, and I did say please several times. Naruto lifted the bucket so he could see the speaker, 
She stood at 56 with curly, straight red hair that shone with an inner light. Two twin Tonto knife swords were strapped to her sides of 42 centimeters in length. She wore a distinctively feminine samurai armor. A strange symbol was drawled on her shoulder pads. Who are you? He asked. Names have power young one. She smiled as she talked in a clipped voice like one who was following a script. You might call me Jen. It is a shorter version of my name after all. Now there's some clothes in the restroom for you after you take a shower. A meal will be prepared and your host will expect you in the garden at 9 sharp. Um, okay. Naruto said as General led him to the restroom. The warm water that rushed over him felt strange. Out of curiosity he took a drink. His eyes opened with shock. It's delicious. With wonder Naruto turned off the water and dried off. He got dressed and walked out to see General. Jen how come these clothes fit me perfectly? Naruto asked as he looked at himself. He was wearing high quality combat boots, fingerless gloves and pants. A dark orange t-shirt with stripes like a tiger fit his upper body perfectly, showing his build nicely. The woman smiled and said nothing. Naruto pouted, fine be that way. Please, follow me to the table for your meal. Today's meal was cooked by yours truly, so I hope you enjoy. As she talked and led Naruto, he was trying to understand what was going on. As he turned around a corner a blur rammed into him. Oof. Naruto and a black-haired girl fell down to the floor. Ow. I am sorry I didn't mean to run into you. The girl spoke as she got up, dusted herself off, turned to face Naruto with her eyes closed and held out her hand, let me help you up. Naruto shook his head and looked at the smiling face of the girl, he grasped her hand and said, thanks. The girl froze when she heard his voice, NN Naruto. She slowly opened her eyes to stare at the blonde, her hand reached out to gently cup his cheek with tears starting to fill her eyes, why you're alive? Why should NTI be? Naruto asked as he looked at the girl. She seemed like she knew him for some reason. The girl opened her mouth by was silenced by Jen, who had placed her hand on her shoulder. Perhaps you should go finish your task that the master of the house asked of you my dear, General said pleasantly. The girl seemed like she was going to argue but nodded her head. Please follow me Naruto, we must not let your meal get cold. Okay. Naruto and Jen walked past the dark-haired girl. As she passed, General placed one of her hands on the girl and winked. Leaning in close she whispered something in her ear. When she was done, the girl smiled and ran off. What was that about Jen? Oh, something that is going to make some people very happy and others upset Naruto. You see, well, it will be better explained by the owner of this house. Time skip. Naruto watched as the man in front of him drink his tea with grace that would put nobles to shame. His own cup was on the table, untouched. The man gave no comment as his half-closed eyes peered at Naruto. Naruto shifted in his seat, on edge, to an untrained eye, the man seemed harmless, however, his training was screaming at him that this man was dangerous, powerful, and not to be treated lightly. Is there something wrong with your tea? The man asked, seeing that Naruto wasn't touching it. N no sir. Naruto quickly took a small sip, he wasn't much of a tea person, but of all the teas he had in his life, this one took the cake, it's, delicious. HN. Naruto's eyebrow twitched, must not kill host, must not kill host. Jen stood off to the side with the pincer of tea watching him out of the corner of her eye. Naruto really wanted to know why she and the man across from him felt so unhuman. Kagaya Otsuki, Madara Uchiha, the Jubi and Morio all had that feeling of overwhelming power. However, their power felt pure, a hand passed in from of his vision with an orange envelope. Now to the point, the man in front of him placed his cup on the table and rested a his head on his hands. Now I am sure that you have many questions that are on your mind. Before you ask do you know who I am? Should I? No, you wouldn't do to your upbringing and the lack of any sort of religious lore or myths in your land. These ladies here know who I am and have heard of me, the young lady that gave you that envelope came under by care by a favor I owe to her father. My name's Bianca D'Angelo, said person spoke up as she stepped into Naruto's viewpoint, out of the corner of Naruto's eye he could see General holding her sides, the man in front of him had a quirk of a smile for a second or two as amusement flashed though his eyes. Her name means White Angel, how do I know that? Nice to met you. I am Naruto Uzumaki, the future of Hokage of Konoha. A pleasure sir. The man cleared his throat when the duo were done introducing themselves to each other. Bianca here is going to be joining you and well as another on several errands. I do realize that you want to get back home to your village. When? Naruto interrupted. As I was saying, I can get you home but it will take time. You see, when you and your fellow ninja won the war, a prison was opened by those that wanted the moon's eye plan to happen, the kind where the one you went to seem like a hotel. Those that were in there escaped and are reaping havoc around the elemental nations and several of them have come to this reality to take their revenge and also to unleash ancient horrors. Your mission, should you accept, is to find, 
kill or capture the prisoners and stop whomever is behind the prison break. Well, what is this rank by the way? An SS rank by your standards, however you and your team will be properly armed and trained to hand yourselves, but be warned, those that you are going to face and the worst of scum, now let us enjoy this weather. Naruto looked at the man and realized something, by the way, what is your name anyway? The man only smiled and sipped his tea. Zoe Nightshade was on the ground with her back against the wall, her heart was racing in her chest, I am I ready for this. It has been years since I last saw him and he didn't even recognize me. Did he forget about me? Gah, get a grip on yourself, you're not a child of that vile love goddess, what would Artemis say? But I am not a hunter anymore and I am not alive. Are you alright Zoe? Zoe turned her head to see General standing nearby, if I say no will you leave me alone? My dear, we both know that you will never be the same, death does that to people, also time. Zoe barked out a hoarse bark of laughter at Jen's attempt to help her, if Artemis was like a mother to Zoe, General was like a grandmother to her, she may seem in her late twenties, but she was older than the Titans themselves. Naruto will be glad to see you again, just as my sister before she took your place in the sky so that you could have a second chance at life. Comma comma comma, look I know that for most of your time as a immortal you spent it massively disliking males that you didn't know, however Naruto did take a special place in your heart before you met Zap Happy's son, you are going to be working with him as well so as it stands you should get to know him again. Thanks. I think, hum, child I have been around for so long that I can only give you the clues that can lead you to the right path, I cannot give you a sure answer, after all, I have no prior experience with relationships, only from what I have seen. Zoe looked at General as she walked away, leaving her to her thoughts. Comma comma comma, again boy, defend yourself. Stay away from me you 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 maniac. Naruto yelped as he avoided being beheaded by the strange man, he had decided to see where Naruto's hand to hand and weapon skills were. Naruto had thought initially that the man would be a pushover even if he was without chakra. Big mistake. The man had been beating Naruto black and blue for the past 10 minutes all without moving from his spot, to add salt to the wounds he was reading a book that when Naruto got close to read the title he wondered if the man was pulling his leg, at least it's not poor Naruto mused as he looked at the mons book of crime and punishment. It is in Russian in case you were wondering why it took so long to find out the title, the man spoke as he twirled his sword. Naruto idly wonder how he had gotten the sword, now try again, that last attack was with little thought of a plan and had the makings of a berserker, a true warrior while in combat uses his surroundings and never stops moving. I know that, Naruto grumbled as he spat out a mouth full of dirt and grass. The man raised his brows, really, I thought that you were the type to rush in a form plans by doing, not thinking, you fight with a limited set of skills and moves, making it up for you endurance, pain tolerates, overly powered charka attacks, and sheer luck, the sarcasm didn't fly past Naruto, he growled as the ma went on, it would be in your best interest to not use luck and known moves all the time, you need to. Ah shut up, Naruto raced forward to give the man a fist to the fast, but the man simply stepped side of the blow, let go of his weapon, grabbed Naruto's head with his freed hand and slammed it into the ground, he then sat on Naruto and but the young man in a simple submission move. Do you want to continue this? I have all the time in existence to do so boy or you can heed my words and learn, um I will take that as a yes, it isn't your fault that oh you race forward into combat, I have that problem as well as we, well, better let someone else explain, in any case, instead of attacking someone, try to defend yourself or defend something that is worth fighting for. Why, the abilities that were unlocked or activated in combat while you, or me, are defending something, I am a defender Naruto, I do fight offensively, but only in the name of my master, in defense of someone who is deemed to be protected by my master, and for my family, when you were in the fourth shinobi war you felt as if the world was slightly different. Yay, I saw that everyone was moving slower than what they should be for one, also I had an easier time making plans too, Naruto looked into the mont's eyes. Yes Naruto, why do I have the feeling that you are going to drop something the size of Konoha on me ladder? Why indeed, whatever do you mean, what do I mean, they are trying to kill me. I did tell the girls to give no quarter for the next hour. Also this is a test to bring out your blood and the only way you will pass is if you use it, even for a moment. You, you really need to pay attention to your surroundings boy. Naruto froze at the cold angry tone that was whispered into his ear, he ducked as a hunting knife slashed at the place where his head occupied moments before, he raced away from Zoe who was taking her time so that her prey could wear himself down, the reason behind the test was mainly for what the man said, but Zoe knew that the man was no man, nor was he a woman, boy girl or any of the gender types that mortals give, no, he was something greater than that. 
Zoe recalled when she and Artemis were hunting together with the rest of the hunt, it was late in the day when he appeared, he asked them to leave the area and tell the rest of Artemis' family to take a hike, he said that they were interfering with forces that were older than Gia herself if they did not leave, naturally, Artemis did not think that the man could harm her and tried to turn him into a deer and shoot him. He word as tried. Zoe shivered as she recalled the blood bath that followed. Out of the sixty hunters that were with Artemis at the time, only herself and eleven others were uninjured, Artemis fought the man so that she and her hunters could escape. But with severity outclassed, she had to summon Apollo, Athena, and Ares to fight him on equal grounds and for healing, in the end the four retreated from the man after Nyx talked to the strange, Artemis had to be in her temple for healing around a day before she could help her remaining hunters together and rebuild, as for Athena and Ares, they were in Apollo's temple for healing for two weeks, the man himself suffered from five broken ribs, a snapped wrist, and a minor concussion from when Athena used Ares as a mace. Artemis swore to have her revenge on the man, but when she, Zoe, and the other huntress found him, he gave her a challenge, knowing that she was ticked at him he asked if she would want to play a game of tag, the rules were easy, only she could chase him and all the time in the word to find and touch him in some way. Zoe shook her head as Naruto slid under Bianca, taking her from her thoughts of the past. And now I have to train his, the irony is, if not for the fight between that Mons Parthenon and the Greece in the past, I would still be in the sky, she thought as she took out her new bow, aimed and fired at the fleeing boy that she had a crush on, she smirked as he cried out in pain as the blunt-headed arrow rebounded off a tree, hitting little Naruto, Bianca looked at Zoe with a what-the-hell look. Zoe shrugged as she started towards the down figure of Naruto holding his ball, habits die hard after all. Comma comma comma, the man called Mr. Smith watched as his two charges beat up Naruto. He had to give Zoe credit on the last shot to Naruto's balls. Even if it was not on purpose, he slightly doubted that Naruto was still not tapping into his full power, that was something that wouldn't do, but Mr. Smith knew that like himself, Naruto was a late bloomer, his life in the element lands showed that while he wasn't the brightest of minds, he had the makings of a great leader and fighter, he looked to see a fire walking towards him from the path leading from the front of the manor, little brother, how have you been? I am fine Gabriel, Naruto there is doing well for one that has never lived up to his full potential, I think that I will send him to the rest of the family after he goes to the Greece's camp of demi-immortals. You do know that Zeus will go crazy if he finds out that he is related to you right? Of course, however, I fear that the Greco-Roman influence will be damaged to the point where they will be able to start freeing themselves, also, with Athena's brother walking up they need all the help they can get, and they aren't the only ones. I hope that they can, the enemy has taken control of the elemental nations completely now and is seeking to gain a greater hold here, wars chains are weakening with the actions of Kronos, Set, Loki, and Gia, the other pantheons are doing what they can, but I fear that it will not be enough, as soon as the first chain snaps he will rise to ride across the lands once more until he either reaches full power or locked up again. That was why you were you ordered to do what you did, out of all of us you were one of the closest to the master after that event, only the fallen have ever had children with the humans and many remember what happens when there is one, they are natural killers, Naruto may be one of the ones that are on our side for now, but how about the ones outside of our influence? He will be killed if he doesn't find his key he will find it, he is the most unpredictable shinobi after all. Gabriel signed, in time maybe, for now he is without the biju and his chakra is mostly stolen from him, I will be able to increase his reserves that he has so that he can be able to use his two most abused moves and the basic moves that he learned in the academy, however I need something from Odin's kingdom for it to work. Mr. Smith and Gabriel smiled as they watched as Naruto got kicked between the legs after he tried to sneak up on Zoe so that he could disable her, unfortunately, Naruto groped Zoe in the attempt, however they winced as Zoe landed blow after blow on Naruto, Naruto tried to escape but ended up putting his face between Bianca legs. Kama kama kama, kama kama kama, kama kama kama, Naruto jumped back and scattered backwards till his back hit a tree, mm mercy, stammered Naruto as a dark aura surrounded Zoe, her eyes glowed as she slowly drew out a hunting knife as she looked at Naruto, Bianca was frozen from embarrassment but she was also starting to have a dark aura around her exclamation mark, die pervert, why, comma comma comma, ouch ouch ouch, Naruto said as Gabriel tended to his wounds, a rather large ice pack was between his legs to relive the pain from being kicked multiple times down there, he yelped as Gabriel yanked out the last arrow out of his rear, stop complaining boy, Gabriel said with an eye roll, even if you got a number on you, you also did a number on the girls, good job on unlocking one of your powers, I call cheat on thy that the power used, Zoe called out from her bedside across the room. 
And how is it fair to keep kicking a friend between the legs fair? Cried out Naruto. He's right you know Zoe, it is a dirty tactic to use, it should be used when you are fighting for your life on the battlefield or in self-defense, thought, it did get the job done like I asked, Mr. Smith stated as said person cleaned the burns on Bianca's hands, Bianca was glaring at Naruto and he could tell she wasn't going to forget anytime soon. In any case Zoe, the damage that was done is so bad that I had have to cut off his tool what, and turn him into a girl, Gabriel said calmly to Zoe. You are lying, cried out Naruto. Not wishing to believe what he just heard, Gabriel rolled his eyes and lifted up a jar, inside was a penis and ball, seeing this Naruto fainted dead away in shock. That was a mean prank brother, Mr. Smith said as he chucked from seeing Naruto's expression, using a prop like that and making sure that he could see what was between his legs. Says the one that unleashed that snick bomb in my office last week. You were the one that declared the prank war, I wasn't the one to place it there and it's your fault that it went off early but you know about it and did nothing. Well excuse me but weren't you the one that tricked me into diaper duty? Zoe and Bianca watched as the duo argued over the mortally of pranks and who was the most at fault, the duo stopped when General walked in and slapped him on the head. You two need to stop fighting about whatever it is you two are fighting about, the last time you two fought it took a thousand years for you to stop, I will not let that happen again on my watch, understood. Yes, understood. Now when Naruto wakes up send him to do whatever mission you got for him, after Ward send him to this address, this will be where he will be staying for as long as he will be here, as for the girls I will take them there so that they can get settled down. Zoe spoke up, where are we going then ma'am? Jen only grinned and pressed her finger to her lips. A lone human-like creature was running down a corridor with a need for speed, his boss wasn't one for late information after all, his eyes glowed in the dark as bile dripped from his maw as he passed rooms of fresh human meat, his claws clicked on the marble floor as he raced to the dark doors at the end of the hall. He was sure that he was the first to come with the information that the boss would love to hear, or hate, he raised a hand and knocked on the door. Come in, the creature shuddered and entered, the room was lit by a fireplace that was lit off to the side to the room, a lone figure sat in a chair at the far side of the room looking out into the skyline, the creature slowly entered and knelt at the halfway point, what is it? I was in a meeting with the former head of one of the gangs that think that they can do whatever they please without our approval. The creature looked at the corpse that had its spine ripped out and impaled thought its heart, the wiped the blood that was dripping down his fingers on a rag, it gulped as it quickly spoke on how it had encountered a boy on its patrol heading towards Boston, how it overhead him mutter about finding a place called the Hotel Valhalla, the man looked bored and walked to his chair. Why are you telling me this? The boy must be one of the Norse blood, probably of one of their pathetic beings that call themselves immortals, if that is all you wish to tell me I should have you killed. The creature shook his head. Their ISS and Anther Reasonnnn, the scent of his blood is of the Greeks but also like yours, he is a Q-U-A-T-E-R-L-I-N-G, it said in a deep voice like granite. The man looked at the creature with narrow eyes, in a second the creature found itself being held by the neck by the man with one hand, a quarterling you say. Are you sure that what you say is true? There are at only at a maximum of eight halflings every few hundred years, all of which have had children that we catalogued and located, now you say that there is an unknown. I swear that the boy is one, the creature hissed, gasped out, the man grunted and let go, the creature signed in relief until the man ran it though with a black blade that glowed with a green sickly light. I knew of the boy before you came, I do not like the fact that you were late, however, you confirmed to me that he was in this era, for that you will have a quick death. The creature screamed as the blade ripped into two pieces, and fell to the ground and rapidly turned into smoke that fled to the fire, the man watched as it fell then went to his desk, picking up the phone he dial a number. Hello Jane, contact Red and his posy, I have a contract for him to do, have him meet me in my office in a few hours, also send in Gia would you please. Yes sir, the man hung up the phone and sat in his chair, his eyes glittered in the dark, so there is a new player in the game huh. It has been a while since I killed a quarterling, perhaps if Red fails my daughters can deal with him, even in their quarterlings they have been trained since birth to be the best killers in my division. Naruto looked at the hotel in front of him. The proud letter boldly proclaimed it to be the Hotel Valhalla, he was told by the strange man to drop off a package at the front desk and say that it was for some guy named Odin, whomever that was, as he walked up to the entrance a doorman stopped him, he had a warty face and an untamed beard with bloodshot letters HV were on top of his uniform, Naruto guessed it was the hotel's style. What do you wanted kid? He said with narrow eyes. I here to drop off a package for someone named Odin, Naruto said calmly as he could. The ma frowned. No one named that here kid, if there was I wound still not allow one of your kind in. What's that supposed to mean? 
Naruto growled out. Both narrowed their eyes at each other. What is going on here? And one-eyed man said as he came out of the hotel. He glared at the duo who had by now a butt to slug it out. Naruto pointed at the man that he was getting mad at. This bastard here hey, will not let me enter to deliver a package to some guy named Odin. I am so sorry sir, but he is a. The man raised his hand. Yes I know. The man reached out with the same hand to Naruto. I am Odin, boy, what is this package and what is your name? Naruto shook Odin's hand. I am Naruto. Here's the package that was sent to you. Odin looked at the boy named Naruto. Usually the different Parathion had little to none interaction unless there was war. Naruto most likely didn't know that the gods made sure of that, unless it was to deal with the children of the fallen. Naruto was most likely one of that Parathion, the eldest one. Odin knew it was likely that the boy was going to do great things, either great good things or terrible things, however that was not his concern. My thanks boy. Odin nodded as he took the package, tell me, who sent this to me? Some guy who was called Gabriel. Naruto saw the flicker of something in the mon's lone eye but it was too fast to see it clearly. Well my thanks, have a pleasant day Mr. Naruto. Naruto looked at out the window as the world sped by, he was halfway between Boston and New York via taxi, he was tired and confused because of something strange, for some reason, every time he spoke to someone he would hear one thing anyone to be translated in his mind, also for some other reason they could understand him as well, even though he was speaking in another language. Mr. Smith did say something about that, but he had forgot about it. Hey kid, this is as far as I can get ya, sure you can get by. Andrew was his driver, an interesting fellow that Naruto met when some thugs were trying to rob him, in thanks for helping him, Andrew gave him a ride as far as possible north as he could after Naruto was done beating up the wannabes punks who were assaulting the old man. I am sure. When in any case, I have a daughter that goes to camp out here, she's visiting friends and family over winter break while I work, if you run into her tell her I said hi well yeah. Sure thing, thanks again. Any time just follow the road north and you'll find the city so nice it was named twice. Naruto snickered and waved as his ride drove off, eyeing the road he set off, as he walked he thought about everything that happened to him, also, what happened to Kurama, Mr. Smith mentioned that the biju were scattered and somewhere safe if the enemy didn't have them. In any event, most were by now reformed in the elemental lands and were safe. The way the word safe came out of his mouth filled Naruto with unease, it was if Mr. Smith knew what he was thinking without trying, like he was an open book, as a ninja with a background of missions of ranging from killing to spying, plus a master of reading people's emotions, Mr. Smith frankly scared him. That was for a multiple of reasons. As a ninja one needs to be able to read people, so that you and live past a battle or make sure you will get paid at the end of your mission, Naruto was a master of that, living on the streets meant reading people better than well kept you alive, and he did not get a reading off Mr. Smith. It's as if the guy was a ghost, Naruto thought as he passed and vacated structure, if he was paying attention, he would have noticed the sign that had several letters faded out. Un ymg den gn um. The several pairs of eyes that glowed in the shadows of the building didn't miss him thought. Help me. Naruto stopped walking at the sound of a young boy's voice. Help us. Oh someone help us. A girl's voice came this time. Naruto's brow narrowed in thought. The voices sounded human, but there was something wrong. The tone was there if they were in trouble, but the way the words were spoken were all wrong, like a recording playing the words or something. Monsters. A grin spanned his face. He was still a bit upset that he got his rear beat with the last monsters he fought against. However, in the back of his mind there was a voice that was telling him that those monsters that he fought weren't low level, more like med level who were more like surprised to see him as he was. Making sure he that no one could see him, he went into the hidden realm. Mr. Smith said that it was similar to Lord of the Rings when the Hobbit had the ring on, one could interact with the world but be invisible to those that weren't aware to the spurt realm. Using his awesome ninja stealth skills he snuck around the building and entered from the rear entrance, shadows and light blurred together in a strange dance as he sneaked around. He entered the building from the back and climbed up to the rafters, creeping along he struck a support beam, making the metal ring. What was that? Naruto froze as a shadow entered the room, with the owner right behind, it looked like a lion, horse thing with plates for teeth, several more of the creatures followed as well. Nothing. There's nothing here, a coarse voice came from the lead thing. Nothing you say, idiot. The group of demigods that are, or rather, were trapped were calling for help. The only reason they are not eaten yet is because of the scent that was heading this way. I still smell it. Oh it smells so good. I have eaten children of the big three and they didn't have such a powerful smell. That's your hunger fool. Naruto watched and listened as the creatures talked as they searched the room. 
from their conversation there were several demigods here as bait to capture him, however, there were at least five of them to his one, with possibly several more elsewhere, without a weapon. Naruto grinned, I like these odds, comma comma comma, Anne held on to her little brother and sister as they huddled together in a cage, she watched as Alucrote rested near the cage while two cyclops feasted on the remains of their satyr guardian protector, she didn't know him well, only that he was taking them to a safe place for children like them, when they were ambushed, she thought that she was going to die with her family without knowing who her mother or father was. Being an orphan without knowing where you came from is hard enough, but to die without anyone caring was the worst feeling. In Hungary, food now. Ask the smaller cyclops to the bigger one. You just ate. The godlings are for tonight. Satyr stringy. Want red, green meat. Anne shuddered when the idiot of the duo looked at her. His face looked like a snowman who got blasted by a flamethrower and pelted by rocks, his blood shoot eye leered at her as licked his blood-covered lips. What, do, you, want with us? Asked Anne's sister, the other cyclops answered. You are to be food after we are done making sure no one will interrupt, he then eyed Anne and got a gleam to his eye, brother, when was the last time you and I were laid? Anne's eyes filled with horror and dread, she and her siblings tried to get away, but the monster was able to grab onto her leg, he pulled her out and closed the door. Let me go, she cried as she was lifted up, she kicked at the monster to try to escape to no avail, let us go you freaks. Can I take her first brother? He asked, ignoring the girl's attempts to hurt him. The second cyclops nodded and the one holding her grinned, Anne's eyes started to tear up as she was pressed to the floor, she never thought that this was going to happen to her, that is, lose her virginity to a monster. Someone, anyone, help me, she cried out in her mind as the monster descended to unclothe her to do the deed. Then he appeared, like an guardian angel, he appeared out of thin air heading towards the monster, Anne felt her face light up and her eyes widened as the light from the sun that fed thought the cracks of the roof gave him the appearance of wings growing from his back, his face, which was quite handsome, was full of rage and fury at the monster but with a feeling of worry for her. Naruto gritted his teeth when he heard what the one eyes were going to do, he was overhead of the strange monster as he watched his ugly one pull the girl from the pen, he shook from rage from her cries of helplessness as the monster started to take of her clothes. Your and my power comes from defense Naruto. Naruto felt fury and power build up inside of him, his memories went back to when he was younger, when he was raped by the so-called male Anbu guards. There is different kinds of defense. He recalled how he swore to himself after the event to do his best to cripple or maim any person who committed or was about to do rape, in fact, on one of his missions he had the honor of giving a group of serial gang rapiers a sex change and job at a boreal as featured whores, Naruto leapt from the rafter heading straight for the second ugly's neck, at the point between the head and the shoulders. But for true warriors like you and me, Naruto's form blurred back into reality causing the head of the animal monster's neck to snap towards him, Jane's eyes widened as she watched Naruto fall towards the monster who was about to rape her. Defense of the innocent and those who cannot defend it themselves is where we both gain power. Look out brother. Too late. Naruto landed on the back of the monster. Using his momentum, his hands pierced the skin and he grabbed the monster's spine. Before the monster could react, Naruto mustered his strength pulled. Blood blasted out of the monster as its spine was separated from its body. As its body was dissolving into dust, Naruto spun around quickly and threw his improvised weapon. The spinal column flew through the air like a javelin, entering the mouth of the lion coarse thing and exiting out from between its shoulder blades and spine. Naruto flipped backwards to avoid an iron beam swung by the remaining cyclops, it growled at him, you. Me, Naruto asked, when the cyclops nodded he pointed at Jane, not her. No, you, I will kill you demigod, but first you will tell me who your immortal parent is, Zeus. Hades, Poseidon, you have the scent of water, air, and death to you, perhaps a legacy of all three. Really, I thought that a poor dimwit like you could realize I do not know. Naruto got into a fighting stance as he prepped to fight the Cyclops, knowing that he was running on a knife's blade, the other monsters probably were racing to the room. Siring a roar, the monster raced forward, as he raced towards Naruto he smashed several of the stone statues that littered the area sending the fragments toward him at blinding speeds, Jane and her younger sibling watched with horror as they watched from their respected spots as the projectiles speed towards Naruto. Naruto watched at the shards flew at him, a part of him was screaming in fear, that he was going to die. He ignored it, he never felt so alive, it was as if he was fighting after a good rest and meal, he recalled a similar feeling during the Chunin exams fighting Neji, he had thought it was Kurama's influence, but now he know, this was his own power, and now the feeling was back, only stronger. For a human or a demigod, the stone shards would either kill or forever maim them if lucky, 
For a hunter of Artemis with training from centuries, the ability to survive was higher, but with a monster charging behind the shards, there was no way to avoid death, even with a weapon. Naruto however was no mere demigod, he was one with ninja training and something more, something older than titans, more ancient than the eldest primordials, and he felt no fear. No, he felt hunger, a hunger to shred his enemy, a lust to rip his enemy's skin and feel the blood dripping down his body, an unrelenting desire to kill. That one word turned the room, already cold from the winter's air, into a frozen tundra. Naruto's eyes glowed as he leapt towards the shads, with impossible agility he dodged the shards, with speed he snatched two shards that were longer than the rest. The one-eyed monster's jaw unhinged as Naruto cleared though the cloud of death with only scratches that were bleeding. Naruto charged with his improvised weapons to the monster, he then slid between its legs as he slashed with his stone shards, cutting muscles and major arties. Ah, you filthy son of a. The monster yelled out, it slammed its weapon onto Naruto, shattering his legs, he grinned as he heard the place where he hit turn to jelly, it faded as he realized that it was a statue he hit, he looked around as he knelt on his knees. Hicker dickery doc, the monster's out of luck, where are you? Anne and her siblings watched as the monster grew uneasy, he turned every which way, trying to find the blonde boy, the sound of breathing came from every corner of the room causing the occupants to jerk at every sharp sound, the other five lucrotes entered and surrounded the cyclops. The clock struck one and blood shall run. All of a sudden, a burr came from behind a statue, then the farthest monster from the trio of demigods yelped as it kicked into a pile of rubble where several jars lay, a spark appeared and suddenly the monster was in a roar pyre of green fire. Everyone, both monster and demigod, moved away from the flames, but one. Hickory dickory dock, the boundaries between life and death are unlocked. The little boy eyes widened as the dust where the first monster died spiraled, the golden dust cogitated together to his horror and shock, but to the joy of the other monsters as the second cyclops reformed. Brother, grab your crossbow, give me a scone, I am still gitn my bearings. The clock struck two and they went to the tome, hickory dickory dock. Naruto's form slammed his hands between two of the monsters, the fire glow that flickered from the dust made his skin glow with an eerie light as it rose when he slammed into the floor, blasts of debris covered the monsters killing them, when the rubble stopped moving it looked like they were entombed. The three other animal monsters raced at Naruto, wanting to avenge their fallen brethren. The clock struck three and, oh, and monsters died. Huh. Naruto grinned. Boom he said as he disappeared and appeared next to Anne and her siblings before taking them into the hidden realm, as they entered the Greek fire ignited the gas tank in the dinner section of the place. WW where are we? Stammered the little girl if it wasn't for his stronger than average hearing Naruto would have missed what the girl said. We're in a place called the Hidden Realm, I don't know much about it but it is only accessed by only a few, sorry for the voice back there, I kind of lost it a bit. It's alright, the boy said softly, he then looked at Naruto with narrowed eyes, are you a superhero? I don't know what a superhero is, but where I am from I am a hero, the boys and the girls eyes light up at that. Anne looked at Naruto's back, you're hurt. She exclaimed as she saw the blistering bubbling skin on his back. I am fine, Naruto stated, and we need to move, I can only keep us in here of so long, also I prefer not to be burned alive. Thanks for watching.